Hello and welcome back to my channel, Quirky What If. Today, we're kicking off the final part of our series, What If Deku Watched Show About Them. The author of this story is Peresk from fanfiction.net.now. Let's dive into the fanfic. Chapter 9, Confession. After Izuku left the conference room and walked out of the North Wing, he got lost in his own thoughts. Aizawa is proud of his progress, despite almost expelling him a few months ago. All Might reassured him that his classmates would never hurt him. Now all he had to figure out was how to tell Ochako that he loves her and wants to be with her. He tried to make it obvious that he likes her when he told everyone his type of girl, and he complimented her costume in front of everyone, which was embarrassing but the smile she gave him was worth it. But all that went through his head was if she had the same feelings for him. She wouldn't try to kiss him on the lips in her room, and then kiss him on the cheek if she didn't have feelings for him. He never had that kind of luck with girls in the past when they knew he was quirkless. He let out a yawn. Aizawa was right about his sleeplessness. For the last two days, it was taking a toll on his mental state. But being with Ochako for the last three, four hours, he almost forgot about it. Almost. Had it not been for that talk, he would have been fine with keeping his anger in check. Now he needed food and a nap but he still needed to talk to Ochako since they had a break like he promised, which made him realize something. Aizawa gave him the green light to be there for Ochako when the time came seeing Sir Naitai's death. That must mean the show might do that. Does that mean he knows that I have feelings for Ochako? There's no way. I didn't tell anyone about my feelings for her except my mom. Then again, I didn't need to tell mom when I started to praise Ochako for how strong and driven she was in her match against Kekin. Ijiro looked at his green-haired friend in confusion as the boy walked into the dining hall like he was stuck under Hitoshi's brainwash again, just without his eyes glossed over. The redhead walked over to Izuku. Hey, Madabro? Are you okay? Ijiro asked, putting his hand on Izuku's shoulder. The one for all successor snapped out of his thoughts, realizing he walked into the dining hall. Why is this always happening to me? Izuku thought. He looked around and didn't see Ochako anywhere or any of the girls. She must be with the girls. He gave Ijiro an embarrassed look. Hey Kirishima, sorry, I was just thinking about something. Is everything okay? Ijiro asked with a concerned look. Bakubro looked like he went through an interrogation, and he wouldn't tell me anything. He went to his room after getting food and his parents looked calm for parents that just saw their son do bad things to his former childhood friend. Izuku winced at the former part which Ijo noticed and immediately wanted to take it back. Sorry. I shouldn't have said it like that. It's fine. Let me get some food first, then we can talk. He went to the buffet table, got some katsudan and grabbed a pair of CH popsticks. He went to a table and sat down. Itadakamasu. Ajiro sat opposite of Izuku as the latter ate and talked. We went inside a conference room and All Might talked about actions having consequences. Then there was his reaction to the aftermath if I did take his unheroic advice. What happened then? They said if I did jump off the roof, he would most likely have been the prime suspect and then taken to a juvenile detention center and blacklisted from every hero school in Japan, Izuku said. He looked very surprised as if he didn't know that he would have been blacklisted. Damn it, Bakubro, you're better than that, Ijo said, shaking his head. I agree, but he would be back then if he didn't have his head in the gutter because of his pride especially from our Quirkus teachers. The two of you are friends, so I don't want this to affect your friendship, Kirishima," Izuku said, continuing to eat his katsudan. You have that much faith in me. Madabro, Ajo grinned. I have known Kaken long enough that despite his attitude, you're the only person that can keep him in line most of the time. Hey, that's not true. I can keep him in line, Ajo said in mock seriousness. Izuku chuckled. So the teachers found out why the bullying started because I tried to help him when we were younger which started an argument between me and him. So I ended up calling him by his last name and then kinda snapped at him. Ajiro's eyes widened. You called him by his last name? Denki asked, 
appearing with two plates of food in his hands, and sat next to Ijiro, who took one of the plates. You always call him Kaken. I never heard you call him Bakugo. How did he react? Ijiro asked. He must have been surprised. I know that I would have been. Izuku smiled slightly. I'm pretty sure everyone in the room was surprised, or at least shocked, especially our parents. He was starting to brag about how much better he was than me, and I couldn't take it. I called him out saying that he's too prideful, and he considers being helped as being looked down on, and that saving people is not considered them being weak. I'm glad that you stood up to him. That was manly of you. Ajiro gave Izuku a toothy grin. Thanks. Izuku massaged the sides of his head. I just kind of wish he'd understand that being a hero means that you also have to save people. You saw it on the scoreboard. He had zero rescue points. Zero. I mean, you had the fourth highest rescue points, Kirishima. I admire him for his fighting spirit, but that's it. I gave him a second chance, so I want to see where it goes from here. Ijiro nodded. I get where you're coming from. We all have our idols, Medabro. They inspire us that if we can save one person, then we're doing our job as a hero. One day, Bakubro will realize that. Yeah, we all know that Bakubro is stubborn, but it'll get through his thick skull that one day he'll be a hero that helps and saves people. Denki said. Thanks for letting me get this off my chest. Izuku smiled at the two, who smiled back. By the way, have any of you seen Ochako? Denki shook his head. Min Ashido said that she and the girls went to our room to do girl talk. Is anything wrong? Ajiro asked. Izuku shook his head. I figured. Nothing's wrong. It's just we were going to have a talk once we got out of the theater. But since Mr. Aizawa wanted to talk to me and Kaken, we're going to our room once she gets here. Denki put his hand to his chin and turned to Ajiro. You're acting suspicious. You almost called Ashido by her first name. What's going on with the two of you? Uh, um, and nothing, Ijiro stuttered. There's nothing going on. Uh-huh. Denki narrowed his eyes. So I was thinking, don't you guys think it's weird that they put us? There you are, Deku. Ochako's voice interrupted Denki. I was wondering why you were not in our room. She approached the boys with the other one of girls in tow. Achako. Izuku turned and smiled at his crush. Sorry if I kept you waiting. I was talking to Kirishima and Kaminari about my talk with Kaken. Achako looked worried. Is everything okay? Izuku nodded, finishing his katsudan. We kinda had an argument because saving someone who looked like they were in trouble is a crime. So I kinda snapped at him and I called him by his last name during the argument. The girls looked at each other in shock. You say it so calmly. You never call him by his last name, Midoriya. You always call him by his childhood nickname. Kayoka said. The day we hear Midori say Bakugu, it's gonna be chaos. Mina said. Round three of Midori versus Bakugu, Toru said excitedly. If they do fight, it has to be a sanctioned fight. We all know Bakugu doesn't hold back especially when it comes to you, Midoriya. Tsuyu said. Ladies, you're getting off topic here. Momo interrupted. I'm sure you had a reason to call him by his family name, Midoriya. He must have done something to upset you. It's a long story. These two will tell you about it. Izuku explained. Just please don't tell anyone else except maybe Todoroki and Ida. Yeah, Yurazu, I'm trusting you and Ida to make sure that it doesn't spread like wildfire tomorrow. I don't need Monoma of all people knowing I got into an argument with Kekin. Izuku gave Mina a small glare to get the point across, which the Pinkette nodded in response in fear. He pulled a 180 and turned to Ochako, giving her a smile. Hey Ochako, do you think we can have our talk now? Sure, we'll see you guys later. Ochako said. Izuku got up from his seat and walked with her out of the dining hall. How does Midori go from scary to kind just like that? Mina asked in awe. That's the power of Madabro, Ijo said. He has quite the intimidating nature. As the successor of All Might, Midoriya will be a formidable hero, Momo said. Ribbit. Tsuyu agreed, 
seeing how Izuku was able to overcome Eri's quirk. 200 yen that those two will get together by the end of a day. Denki randomly said, Ijiro and the girls looked at him. How would you know that? Kayoka asked. Midabro is dense, but he's not stupid. Denki said, Plus, I'm a betting man, so start making your bets. My bet is on Yuraraka to confess first. The six of them shook their heads, but made their bets. Izuku and Ochako made their way into their room. The former closed the door and Ochako sat on the bed. She wanted him to sit next to her, but he denied, saying he was fine where he was. Izuku stood in front of her, looking at her nervously. I think I should go first. Ochako said, a blush started to form on her cheeks. So about what happened in my room. I know emotions were high because of my nightmares and we were hugging and comforting each other. I thought I'm going to make a move on Deku, but Mr. Sinclair came in and interrupted us. I won't be mad if you think it was weird that I was about to make a move on you since we're not dating. Ochako, Izuku said, now looking at the floor. He knew where this was going. If he didn't say something now, he would lose her and it would be awkward as her roommate couch mate for the time they'll be here. It's and not weird that you wanted to kiss me. You see, I wanted to say this for a long time, but I... Please let me finish, Deku. Ochako interrupted before continuing. I don't want to be rude and I'm sorry for cutting in, but I thought about this for a while, and after talking with the girls, I realized that running away from this is just going to make things harder for us. What I'm trying to say here is, I love you, Izuku Midoriya. Izuku looked up at her in shock. Wa what? Ochako gave him a bright smile. You saved me from the Zero Pointer, and you became my hero. Ever since you saved me, I knew you were the one for me. I always think about how amazing and special you are. When you chose Deku as your hero name, it made me happy. You're always so determined, and when I'm with you, everything just feels right, and I'm genuinely happy. You inspire me to be a better hero and person. Sometimes you would have me blushing like a fangirl, and I always think back to when Aoyama asked me if I like you and Mina thought that I was in love. They were both right at the time, but I tried to deny it. Ochako looked away in shame. But I made a mistake during the provisional exam. I decided to put my feelings for you to the side because I saw you wanting to reach your dream to be a hero, and I wanted to reach my dream as well. I know it was selfish and wrong of me to hide my feelings from you, and I'm sorry for never telling you. But after the Yakuza raid, you were by my side when I needed you. Then seeing everything you went through to get into UA and all those nice things you said about me, it made my heart burst with happiness and adoration, and the feelings that I put away came back. It made me realize I was wrong, and that being with you is also my dream. I love you, Izuku. Ochako looked back toward Izuku when she was met with silence. She gasped when she saw his face. The boy she confessed to had tears in his eyes and his lip was trembling. She put her hand to her mouth. Izuku, I was completely oblivious to your feelings. How can you love someone like me? Why would you want to be with reckless incarnate with an eight-generation-old burden? Izuku asked in a quiet voice. He looked down, his hair shading his eyes as his tears ran down his face. Ochako looked at her crush sadly. Izuku, none of that is. Izuku put his hand up to stop her before putting it back down. Just, hear me out. Forgive me if I sound selfish, but I need to start at the beginning to get this off my chest. Please. He looked up at Ochako to get her response and she nodded. He powered through his tears and spoke as clearly as he could. All I ever dreamt about was being a hero, no matter what anyone said or did, but I felt alone and I hated it. I met All Might and my dream was finally coming true, but that's not my only dream anymore because you came into my life, the kindest and sweetest girl I ever met. On the first day we met, you saved me not once but twice and then you were willing to risk your points for me. You became my hero and I wound up falling for you, but I didn't. I didn't feel alone anymore. You're one of the first real friends I made coming to you, uh, Ochako. You took a nickname that hurt me and you made it into a great hero name. Your dream to help support your parents is inspiring. You're beautiful, strong and driven. 
You make me happy and my heart bursts with that same happiness when I'm around you even if I turn red out of blushing. After the sports festival, my mom made me realize that I had a crush on you after I watched your match at home and I praised you. Izuku stopped to sniffle and wiped the tears from his eyes, not noticing that Ochako was listening to every word with tears of her own. Truth is, I'm terrible at expressing my own feelings because of my inexperience, and even though my heart was telling me to go to you and express them, I couldn't do it. Izuku's voice cracked and Ochako wanted to hug him, but she knew he was not done yet. During the provisional license exam, the moment I was confronted by that shiksu girl when she was disguised as you, I blurted out how I knew that she wasn't you, and it made me realize that I love you. I know I make it seem like I'm so obsessed with being a hero because I thought it would make up for everything I went through even if I had to do it alone. But in truth, being a hero only makes up for it when you're by my side. I don't know what I'd do without you, and I don't want to hurt you more than I already have. You're my dream girl, and I love you, Achako Yuraka. After his long-awaited confession, Izuku fell to his knees, and he broke down. He didn't want to cry in front of the girl he loves, but he was tired of being alone. What he thought would be a simple confession turned into an emotional roller coaster. He knew he hurt her, and now she probably hated him for his obliviousness all these months. But he let it all out in front of her. He could trust himself to be vulnerable around Ochako. Ochako's heart dropped seeing him break down like that. She felt so horrible inside. How could she be so selfish? She pushed her feelings for him down so easily, but she never thought about his feelings. All this time, she thought that a possible romance would hinder him, but he needed and wanted someone in his corner. Izuku felt Ochako's arms wrap around him. He opened his eyes and saw her crying into his chest. He wrapped his arms around her. They cried together for a few minutes before he felt a little guilty for making her cry. Ochako, hey, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Izuku asked worriedly as he wiped his tears with his hand. Ochako looked up at him as tears fell from her eyes. I'm sorry, Izuku. I was so stupid and selfish and I hurt you. How can I call myself a hero if I hurt someone I care about? He shook his head and wiped the tears from her eyes. Don't say that. You can't blame yourself. You are a hero to me. You always will be. I thought you would hate me for staying quiet about my feelings and being oblivious. Ochako shook her head, looking at him sadly. I could never hate you, Zuku. I always admired you, but I was scared of ruining our friendship, so I didn't say anything. But you were hurting all this time and I failed to see it. How can I deserve your love after what I did? Izuku's mouth opened in shock, and he blinked slowly. He wanted to comfort her and tell her to stop blaming herself, but all that came out of his mouth was, You have an accent. Ochako's eyes widened. She covered her face as he looked at her in admiration. I'm sorry. I tried to hide it because I'm from Mai and people would think I'm some bumpkin. No, it's okay, Izuku said, putting her hands down. He gave her a hug and whispered in her ear, It's more genuine. She shivered slightly from Izuku's breath against her ear. She cupped his cheeks. You really think so? Izuku nodded and put his hands on top of hers. He gave Ochako a warm smile. Can I be a little selfish? Ochako nodded. What is it? I know you hide your accent around everyone else, but can you use it when we're alone here? Izuku asked innocently. Ochako tapped her finger on her chin. What's the magic word? Izuku groaned in exasperation. Ochako. No, that's not it. Come on, you can do it. Ochako teased. Izuku pouted. Please, Ochako. Ochako stuck her tongue out. I was going to use my accent round you anyway. You just fell for my trick. Izuku hugged his crush. Thank you, Ochako. I'm sorry for being a selfish coward and not telling you all this time. Don't apologize, my bunny, Ochako said, bringing him down to her eye level and pressed her forehead to Izuku's. You're not selfish or a coward. You was going through a lot and you finally let it out. If I knew that you had trouble with your feelings, 
I would have talked to you about this instead of hidden how I felt. I understand why you couldn't tell me about one for all. But I'm happy that we finally did this. I'll never leave ya, not ever. I'm not letting you carry this burden alone. Izuku's heart leaped when he heard her say the last line, and he hugged her tightly. He gave a small laugh when he heard what she called him. Bunny, you're giving me a new nickname. What happened to Deku? You're still Deku, my hero, the hero that saves everyone with a smile. And I like Bunny. It suits you especially how cute you are. Ochako touched Izuku on the nose. I'm cute? Would someone cute do this? Izuku asks with a smirk and starts tickling Ochako's sides. Ochako started laughing. Izuku? Zuku, stop. I'm ticklish. Izuku ignored her pleas and kept tickling her. She fell to the floor, giggling loudly and squirming as he tickled her. Her giggling was so infectious that he started laughing with her. He was laying on top of her, their faces a few inches apart. He stopped tickling her when he realized their position. She stopped giggling and blushed, seeing him so close to her like that knowing how he felt when she was close to him. She was tempted to wrap her arms around his neck and pull him into a kiss, but she wanted to see what he would do. Izuku also blushed. Sorry, I went a little overboard there. He got off of Ochako and helped her up. He took a deep breath and wrapped his hands around her waist. Can I kiss you? No, Ochako said. Izuku looked at Ochako in shock. Huh? Ochako wrapped her arms around Izuku's neck. I said no because I got interrupted earlier and I promised myself I would give my hero a reward. She stood on her toes and pressed her lips to his lips. The kiss was a little sloppy, but Ochako felt as if she would burst with happiness from the kiss. All the time could pass in the world while they were kissing, and she wouldn't care. After a few minutes, Izuku broke the kiss and pressed his forehead to Ochako's forehead. Both of them were breathless. Is that good? Ochako whispered. Izuku nodded. That was... wow. I'm so happy my first kiss is with you. Ochako giggled. Me too. One more time. Izuku nodded. Yeah. They kissed one more time. Izuku tilted his head to better deepen their kiss. They separated from the much longer kiss and smiled at each other, before dissolving into giggles. You taste like vanilla, Izuku said, in between giggles. And you taste like katsudan, Ochako said. I'm going to spoil you with kisses. I would like that, Izuku said. Only if I spoil you with kisses, too. Ochako nodded and looked at Izuku with adoration. This makes us boyfriend and girlfriend now, right? Izuku let out a wholehearted laugh and lifted Ochako off her feet and spun her around, making her squeal. Yes, a million times, yes, he put her down and kissed her. Ochako gave Izuku a bright smile. What did I do to deserve ya, Izuku? she asked. Izuku cupped her face. Just keep being you, Achako. That's all I ask of you. He gave her a peck on the lips. I like it when you call me by my name. It makes me happy, Ochako said. I like it when you call me by my name too. It's like when you call me Deku. It means a lot to me. Izuku gave her another peck on the lips. I tilde zu tilde ku. She said his name, syllable by syllable. Izuku blushed, hearing her say his name like that. Now it's my turn to be a little selfish. What do you want to do? Izuku asked. I want us to change into regular clothes and snuggle. Ochako said. So straightforward, Izuku said jokingly. Hush. Ya do as I tell ya. Ochako put a finger to Izuku's mouth. Ya hear me? Imamechimim. Izuku nodded. He kissed her finger. Izuku, bad boy. Ochako smacked her boyfriend on the shoulder playfully. You know you love me, Izuku said coyly. Do I know that? Ochako asked rhetorically. Yes. Yes, I do. So who should change first? Ladies first. Izuku bowed slightly, a small smile on his face. Such a gentleman. Ochako kissed Izuku's cheek grabbed her clothes and went to the bathroom. 
A few minutes later, Izuku and Ochako were on the bed, stealing kisses. The brunette had snuggled up against Izuku's shoulder. She couldn't help but brush her hand against Izuku's scarred right arm. When she first saw the scars, she was scared knowing how badly injured he got. But now she wasn't scared of them. These were the scars of a hero. Ochako, is something wrong? Izuku asked, breaking the silence. I was just thinking, Ochako said, intertwining his malformed hand with her own hand. Your scars, Zuku. They make you the hero that you are, the living proof of everything you have done to save those in need. I've come to terms that you can get hurt in battle. But I was scared after your match with Todoroki when Recovery Girl said that you needed surgery and when you were in the hospital after the training camp. I know I promise to be by your side, and I won't scold you for your previous bone breakins, but promise me that you won't get hurt badly anymore. Izuku rubbed his thumb against Ochako's hand. I promise I won't get hurt badly anymore. That's why I created Shoot Style, my Machai. I was always trying to imitate All Might, but I realized I'm not him. I'm my own hero. I learned to use my legs in order to protect the ligaments in my arms. My new fighting style is working out well for me. Good. Ochako then looked at Izuku in surprise. Machai? Izuku laughed at her reaction. You think you're the only one who can give me a nickname? You're my Machai. You're soft and sweet. He starts kissing her cheek multiple times. You're too cute for your own good. Ochako gave him a nice passionate kiss. But don't think you're off the hook, Mistak. I'm still going to scold you for any stupid or reckless acts you pull in the show. Izuku kissed her hand. Yes, ma'am. Can I tell you something, Zuku? Ochako asked with a blush on her cheeks. What is it? You kinda already confessed that you love me two times. Ochako admitted. Izuku's eyes widened in shock. What? When? Did you hear me whisper it? How? I don't remember the second time happening. I didn't hear you whisper I love you, but Kayoka did. Ochako gave Izuku a little smirk. Gyro's earphone jack, Izuku said, shaking his head. The girls, even Kendo and Hatsum, said they will carry this secret to the grave. They just want you to confirm that you know just in case with a pinky raise. You actually believe that Ashido and Hagakure will keep this a secret? Izuku asked. Out of all the nosy people in our class, and those two are the biggest gossipers, you trust them. They better keep this a secret, or I'll give them a taste of my gunhead martial arts, Ochako said. Izuku chuckled. Now that's something I want to see. Remember when you said you was bout to destroy Minta? Ochako asked with a smile, and Izuku nodded. Ya yeah, subconsciously said that you love me when he said you first had sex with that girl from Shiksu during the provisional exam before saying you did it with me in my room. Now everyone in the theater knows that you love me. Izuku shuddered at the mention of the Shiksu girl, which confused Ochako. I don't want to think about her. After what I found out during the Yakuza raid, you're not going to like it if I tell you who that actually was. What are you talking about? Ochako asked worriedly. Izuku gulped. That was actually Himiko Toga. Ochako looked horrified. T. Toga? T. the crazy girl from the training camp? She was at the provisional exam. Why? Izuku nodded. That's the one, and I'm not sure why. But knowing the League, it's not good. She was disguised as Rocklock, and Mr. Aizawa figured out that it was her. It all made sense when there were two of them, which ended up with her almost stabbing me. She completely fooled me when she called me by my last name. Does anyone else know that she was at the exam? Achako asked. I told Mr. Aizawa, Izuku admitted. But how did she transform into me? Maybe it has something to do with her quirk. Izuku said, She's always carrying a knife and she has a thing for blood. Achako gasped in realization. She took my blood, Zuku. Can that be how her quirk works? So her quirk is blood-related. Izuku grimaced, remembering Stain and his quirk. It doesn't explain how she can stack her disguises on her original body. Then again she was naked when your costume disguise melted off. That's going to traumatize me for life. 
I guess her quirk is more complicated than we thought. Ochako said, So that could explain how there were two Izukas during the Yakuza raid. I need to be sure before I say anything to Zuku. Yeah, you're telling me, Izuku grimaced. So Toga knows the secrets to my quirk. Ochako said flatly, That's why she said that you trust me a lot. Yeah, I'm sorry, Ochako. Izuku hung his head in shame. If I knew it was her, I would have not said anything. What did I say about apologizing? Ochako asked sternly. I'm not mad at you. It's not your fault that you didn't know that Toga was in disguise, so don't blame yourself. But Toga is a villain. She's not someone we can trust. Izuku said. I know, but if you keep blaming yourself, I'm gonna keep kissing ya. Now I know when you loved me. Ochako kissed Izuku. Do you want to tell everyone else when we get to that part of the show? They'll find out either way from the show most likely. Izuku sighed. But I hate keeping secrets from them, so I might as well. Okay, that's fair. I'm glad she didn't hurt ya. Did anything else happen between you two before me and Siro came in? Achako asked. Izuku shook his head. And nothing be bad, I promise. He said nervously, looking at Ochako. Ochako laughed at his nervous stuttering, releasing the tension in the air. Izuku, that was one of the reasons that you wanted to give mine to a beaten. You love me more than be with another girl. Ochako kissed Izuku on the cheek. I love you so you won't need to worry about me leaving yet, my bunny. Izuku returned the kiss on the cheek, which turned into another breathless lip session. Ochako wanted to spoil her boyfriend with the love he has longed for and to make up for lost time. She leaned towards him and planted a kiss to his cheek. Ochako, Izuku gasped in surprise. Sorry, is it too much? Ochako asked, giving Izuku a mischievous smile. She planted another kiss on his cheek. Izuku shook his head. She climbed into his lap and kissed him. He got a little turned on by his girlfriend's sudden eagerness. He put his hands on her thighs, massaging them. He likes how soft they are. You're a little confident today, Zuku. Does seeing your girlfriend like this make you happy? A little excited? Chaco teased. I'm dating my dream girl now. Of course I'm happy. Izuku said, kissing her. Are you trying to tempt me now? Is it working? Ochako asked. Uh, maybe. Izuku leaned forward and kissed along her jaw. She gasps in surprise and pleasure as he nibbles a little of her jaw. Why don't you tell me, Ochako? You're gonna be the death of me, Zuku. Ochako whispered. Izuku chuckled. I'm okay with that. Less talking, more kissing. Ya yeah, hear me? Ochako said impatiently, kissing his forehead. Yes, Izuku said mischievously. He shifted his hands from his girlfriend's thighs to her sides and quickly turned her over so that her back was on the bed and he was on top of her. She yelped in surprise as the back of her head hit the soft pillow. He propped himself on his elbows and smiled down at her. Izuku, Ochako pouted. A little warning next time. Sorry. I wanted to see your reaction, Izuku said, smiling at her adorable pout. You're lucky you're cute cause this is the only time you're getting away with this. First tickling me and now flipping me over like this. You're so mean, Ochako said, still pouting and crossed her arms. You're so beautiful. Izuku kissed her on the lips, cupping her cheeks. Her pout melted from the third time he called her beautiful and she wrapped her arms around his neck finally getting her wish. Maybe her boyfriend wasn't so mean. So you're saying you want to make our relationship public after all this time? Ajiro said, massaging Mina's shoulders. Yes, I know that it seems sudden, but I have a feeling that Ochako has a plan to make us reveal our relationship tomorrow. Mina said, closing her eyes in bliss as her boyfriend's magic hands massaged her shoulders. I don't mind making it public, but do you think your Araka would actually do that? Ijiro asked. You should have seen the way she was looking at Hatsum, Iji, Mina said. She was annoyed that Hatsum put her hands on Midori, even though she is dating Ida. Hatsum and Ida are dating? That's unexpected of our class rep, 
Ajo sounded baffled that Tenya is dating a girl totally opposite of his personality. They started dating after the internships. They kept it a secret kinda like us. Mina admitted. Huh, who would have thought? Ajiro asked rhetorically. After three hours of cuddling, Izuku and Ochako took showers and asked for katsudin and machai for dinner, which appeared in their hands since they didn't want to leave their room to get dinner from the buffet table. After they were done eating and their nightly routine, they laid down in their bed. Ochako laid on top of Izuku, her hands carting his curly hair. So what are we going to do about tomorrow? Izuku asked, his hands on Ochako's back. Should we tell everyone? What do you mean? Ochako asked, looking at Izuku. Everyone now knows that I love you. You said you had a talk with the girls, so most of them are expecting to see us together and will probably give me hell if they don't. Plus, we're going to be the first couple in our class. Izuku said, We're not going to be the first couple in our class. We're probably going to be the first public couple. Izuku gave Ochako a confused look. What are you talking about? Toru and Ajiro are the first couple in our class. Then Hatsum and Ida. After that is Mina and Kirishima. Now we're a couple. Ida and Hatsum, Izuku asked in confusion. When did they start dating? Then why was she all over me in the support studio? They started dating after the internships. She didn't say why she did it, but I think I know. Ochako said. You think they knew that we like each other? Maybe Ida knew and he told Hatsum. Ochako said. So she was trying to make you jealous. Izuku said, sounding amused. Ochako smacked Izuku on the chest. Shut up, says the one who was freaking out after seeing her boobs. Izuku laughed. You got me there, but you do have nice BB. Ochako giggled seeing her boyfriend stutter out a compliment on her body. I have nice boobs? Izuku stopped stuttering, his face burning with embarrassment. He nodded, kissing Ochako. I never thought I'd hear you say that, Zuku. Ochako said, tracing circles on his chest. Or try to. Well, it's the truth, especially when you're in your hero costume. Oh yeah, you definitely made that clear. Ochako teased. Izuku covered his face. Stop embarrassing me. Ochako's response was to put her boyfriend's arms down, lean forward and kiss him on the cheek. I think you'll look handsome in your hero costume, Zuku. Really? Izuku looked surprised. Why do you look so surprised? Ochako asked. You act like I just told you to catch me in midair? Izuku sighed heavily. It's just that I'm getting used to all this. The fact that a girl actually wants me, and not just any girl, my dream girl. A part of me knows what it means to be a hero, but the other part of me wants to see the other aspects of life like dates, cuddles, romantic getaways, and many more. We're equals in this, Ochako. Deku and Yuravity, Izuku and Ochako. Ochako gave Izuku a look filled with love and nuzzled her cheek against his. I'm sorry for calling you plain. Izuku looked miffed. You're still upset about that? I'm not mad at you for that, Ochako. I know I look plain. Ochako looked surprised. What? You do not get to say you're plain because I said it. With 80% of the population possessing quirks, people are bound to look different. There are a lot of people out there who probably look plain despite their quirks. Izuku explained. If you didn't say I looked plain, someone else would say it. I have a powerful quirk now, but not everyone would see that based on my appearance. So don't be upset, my machai. He kissed Ochako, massaging her scalp. Do you want to know something, Zuku? She whispered in his ear. What is it? Izuku asked. I love your determination. I love your smile. I love your strength. I love your lips. I love your freckles. I love your eyes. I love your heroism. For every compliment she gave him, she gave him a peck on the lips. But more importantly, I love you, my hero. She gave him a kiss that made his heart flutter. Izuku sighed in happiness and held Ochako in his arms as they kissed. I love everything about you too, Ochako. Ochako melted into Izuku's embrace. Like what? she asked her boyfriend. 
I love your smile. I love your eyes. I love your blush marks. I love your drive. I love your spirit. I love your kindness. I love your lips. I love your strength. But more importantly, I love you, my gravity queen. Just like Ochako gave him a peck on the lips for every compliment, he did the same to her and kissed her like she kissed him. Gravity queen, that's a new nickname you gave me. Ochako said with a blush on her cheeks. It's a nickname I've had since the sports festival. Instead of your name, I have you saved as Gravity Queen in my phone. Izuku admitted. Really? Ochako asked excitedly. I want to see. Can we do that later? I don't want you to leave my arms just yet. Ochako kissed Izuku on the cheek. Okay, but just so you know, I have a plan with Toru and Mina. Izuku's eyebrows perked up. What do you have planned? Ochako told her plan to Izuku. His mouth opened in shock. Ashido and Hagakure are going to kill us. Ochako rolled her eyes. Yeah, I know. But come on, Zuku. They deserve it. They're trying so hard to get us together all this time, but they're hidden their relationships from everyone. We'll get Ida and Hatsum later. Now that sounds like a plan, Izuku said with a grin. Let's do it. That's the spirit, Zuku. Ochako said with a smile. She yawned. Sounds like someone's tired, Izuku said. Mm, yeah, I am. To answer your question, Zuku, I'm happy with telling everyone we're dating. I'm probably the happiest girl here because I'm datin' my hero. Ochako said, getting off Izuku and snuggled into his side as he wrapped his arms around her. I'm happy too that we're finally dating, Izuku said, kissing her forehead. Jinai Zuku, Ochako said closing her eyes. Good night, Ochako, Izuku said, soon falling asleep with her. Somehow, Ochako knew that she slept better with Izuku's arms around her. For once, she felt her dreams would not be haunted by fear from her own failure to save Sir Naitai. She hoped that Izuku would always do this for her. Little did she know, Izuku was thinking the same thing as she was. Chapter 10, A Sneak Peek While everyone was sleeping, the Sinclairs were watching TV in the guesthouse. A Leicester, you know what this means, right? Giselle asked, her hair in a bun, tugging on the sleeves of her comfort where, while resting her head on her husband's shoulder. A Leicester hummed, rubbing his temples. It's beginning. They're just kids. How can the Safety Commission do something like this? Giselle looked at her husband with fear. The Commission is hungry with power. A Leicester sighed. Giselle decided to change the subject. The opening and ending songs are good. Agreed, a Leicester stated. So much is going to happen this season. Giselle said, there'll barely be any focus on green tea. And the name is Izuacha, a Leicester deadpanned. Green tea. I'm not going to say that ship name, Giselle. Whatever. Giselle rolled her eyes. So what are we going to do until morning? A Leicester asked. Uno. Dos. I'm talking about the card game. I'm joking. Sure, let's play Uno. A Leicester closed the TV and a box of said cards appeared in his hands. He started shuffling the cards inside. All Might and our guest are not going to be happy when they see what happened to Tenko's family when we get to season five. Nobody will be after MVA and I don't blame the boy. After what his father had done, I fear what Koda and Eri would have become if Izuku didn't come into their lives. They are the same if not different from the two. Giselle said, taking her set of cards from a Leicester. What has happened cannot be changed. Izuku is a hero in the eyes of Koda and Eri, so that is one difference between Tenko and the children. A Leicester stated. I thought normal humans could be monsters, but it's even much worse in their world. Lord knows what would have happened if we showed them all of season 6 or when 304 gets animated. Giselle said and a Leicester nodded. A shame. There are so a few good candidates for one for all. Katsuki made explosion look like nuclear warfare in Heroes Rising. Tsu is going to eat her words and Lord, she is too blunt. Giselle shook her head. But the timeline doesn't make sense. 
Does Heroes Rising come first or the joint training? Everyone says joint training, but it's still so confusing. Let's not give ourselves metaphorical migraines. Forget what anyone says about the timeline of the show. Agreed, Uno. Chapter 11, The Morning After. Second to to last non-reaction chapter. Maybe. Still not even done with episode 8 yet. Izuku blinked the morning drowsiness out of his eyes. As he tried to sit up, he heard Ochako whine, No, not yet. Izuku looked down and saw Ochako with a small pout looking at him, her head and arms sprawled on his chest. Yesterday wasn't a dream. His eyes widened in realization. If last night wasn't a dream, then everything that happened actually happened. He's watching a show that is currently showing his past. He snapped at two of his classmates yesterday. He and Ochako kissed like they were in a frenzy. Yesterday is definitely catching up to him at this moment. He was suddenly interrupted by Ochako putting her hand on his mouth. You're muttering, Zuku. Sorry. He's dating the girl he loves and they fell asleep in each other's arms. He sighed happily and laid his head back down on the pillow. He checked his phone. Fine. One more hour. Ochako happily cooed and soon went back to sleep. Izuku whispered one last thing before dozing off into the dream realm. I love you, Ochako. An hour later, they woke up from their slumber. Good morning, my bunny, Ochako said with a sweet smile. Good morning, my machai, Izuku said, smiling back. Ochako sat up and stretched. Izuku finally sat up and leaned against the headboard. How'd you sleep? Izuku asked. I slept well, surprisingly. Your warmth and comfort are definitely what I needed. Ochako admitted. You? Same. I'm glad that we were able to sleep after everything, Izuku said. No nightmares? he asked curiously. None, Ochako said. That's good, Izuku said, looking at Ochako. You're acting weird, Zuku, Ochako said with a raised eyebrow. Izuku laughed. Sorry, I'm just realizing yesterday wasn't a dream. Ochako giggled nervously. I know this isn't the normal way these things are done, but I guess it has been a long time common. I was bane stupid, and we were emotional after what happened. But even then I don't regret what we did last night and... Izuku chuckled, which stopped Ochako. It looks like my muttering has spread to you. Ochako covered her mouth, face going red. So we need to talk about ground rules. Okay, Izuku said. Whatever happened in this room last night stays in this room? Ochako said. I thought that was obvious since we got Ishido, Hagakure, and Ida here. Izuku snarked. Ochako softly headbutted Izuku. You know what I mean. I know. Ochako squeezed Izuku's hand. Come on, let's go get breakfast. She got up from the bed, grabbed her UA track pants, and a t-shirt from her wardrobe and went to the bathroom to change. Izuku got up and stretched. He looked at his phone and noticed there was another phone next to it. His eyes widened in shock. Did the Sinclairs actually listen to my request and get her an actual smartphone? Oh my gosh, this is crazy. They're so nice. He noticed there was a note on top of the phone. Good morning, Izuku. We know you requested a phone for Ochako to use during your time here. Even if you had not requested to give her a phone, we would have done it either way, forgive us for being blunt. Once you pick up this note, it will be replaced with a different note, A and G, Sinclair. Izuku picked up the note and the words were replaced with a different message. Good morning. Since Miss Jiru requested the music from the show, all of your phones have been given a music app labeled MHA with the songs from the show. Do not ask how we did it. As we go from one season to the other, more songs will be added. We will see you at 11. A. And G. Sinclair. Hey Zuku. What ya holdin? Achako asked, appearing behind Izuku. He gave her the note. Mr. and Mrs. Sinclair apparently gave you a new phone. They said that the music from the show has been added into all of our phones to listen to. A smartphone? Fermi? Ochako exclaimed in disbelief. 
She started squealing in excitement. She picked up the phone and started going through it. There's the man and woman of the hour, Mina exclaimed as Izuku and Ochako walked into the dining hall, hand in hand. We were wondering why you two didn't come downstairs for dinner last night. Whoever was in the dining hall turned to see the new couple walk in, surprised they were holding hands. That's quite the introduction, Ishido. We were in our room, too lazy to get up. Izuku said, shaking his head in amusement. Good morning, Mina. Ochako said jokingly. Good morning, everyone. Izuku said with a smile. All Might and the three parents smiled brightly seeing how happy he looked. I guess you guys are kind of wondering how everything went since yesterday when Izuku said he loves me in the theater. Ochako said, smiling brightly. She held up Izuku's hand. We're a couple now. The majority of class A that were in the dining hall smiled and were ecstatic at the announcement. The only ones missing were Minoru and Katsuki, which the two were thankful for. All the girls except the stoic ones squealed. Mina and Toru ran over to Izuku and Ochako and wrapped them in a group hug. You two did it. That's my fluffy buddy, Mina said, ruffling Izuku's hair. Fluffy buddy? Izuku asked. We got fluffy hair so fluffy buddies, Mina said. Midori is so happy and Ochako looks like she's walking on air, Toru said, jumping up and down. Called it, Yuga said from his seat. Inko walked up to the two of them and wrapped them in a hug. I'm so happy for you too, she said, tears falling from her eyes. Thank you, Mrs. Midoriya, Ochako said with a smile. Call me mom. You're part of the family now, Inko said. When we get back to Japan, I hope you can come over one day and I can show you Izuku's baby pictures. Mom, no, Izuku exclaimed. Mom, yes, Ochako giggled, pulling Izuku's cheek. I bet you were dressed in All Might onesies. This is so embarrassing, Izuku said, covering his face. Also one more thing, Ochako. The said girl gulped when she saw the look on Inko's face. I think you know what I am about to tell you, so I hope I don't have to say it. Ochako nodded quickly. Yes, ma'am. I mean, yes, mom. That goes for you too, Izuku. Inko said, looking at her son. Yes, mom, Izuku said. Good. Once more, welcome to the family, Ochako. Inko went back to her sweet, smiling self. Wait, Mrs. Midori, you know that Midori has a thing for Ochako? Mina asked. Izuku scratched the back of his head. Mom kinda made me realize I have a crush on Ochako after the sports festival. Mina hit Izuku's shoulder with a flurry of fists. You need to work on your self-esteem and confidence, Midori. I don't expect you to change so quickly, but you better treat Ochako like a queen. Mina, stop hitting Madabro. Aijo said. When did Kirishima call her by her first name? Izuku and Ochako thought. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, that hurts. I mean, it doesn't really hurt, but oh, Izuku said. Mina stopped punching him. Plus, Ochako is not a queen to me. Midnight, and the other girls gasped when he said that. The zero-gravity user looked amused as her boyfriend pulled her into his arms. Izuku gave Ochako a kiss on the cheek. She's my gravity queen. Awa. The girls gushed. Midoriya, Tenya started to say. Public displays of affection are not. Ida, Izuku interrupted. I am going to stop you there. This has been a long time coming, and I think I deserve to give my girlfriend a kiss on the cheek. Don't worry, we'll keep the PDA to a minimum. Awa. The girls gushed again. That's enough gushing. We could have stayed in our rooms for breakfast, but we knew that you would barrage us with questions when we got to the theater, so ask your questions after we get breakfast," Ochako said, dragging Izuku to the buffet table where they grabbed plates and stuffed their plates with waffles and eggs. They went to the table where Mina was sitting with Ijiro. The couple noticed how close the two of them were, realizing their plan to have the two of them make their relationship public was not going to work. The moment they sat down, most of the students in the dining hall 
other than the ones sitting at Mina's table grabbed their chairs to get as close to them, even the teachers. Izuku banged his head against the table, surprising mostly everyone. This is not a public interrogation. Sorry, Greeny, but I like people spilling their tea as much as Mina does, so spill, Setsuna said. Fine. Izuku sat up. Ask away. First question, Mina said. Who confessed first? Izuku pointed to Ochako. I technically confessed first which Ochako told me about, but since I was not aware I confessed, she gets this one. He said, raising his left pinky, letting the girls who interrogated his girlfriend know that she told him about their little secret. I didn't know if Izuku was going to confess first, so I took the chance to explain a few things, then I confessed that I love him and everything that I love about him. Achako said, putting a piece of waffle in her mouth. I'm glad that she confessed first. It made me realize how oblivious I was all this time to Achako's love for me. Izuku said sadly before smiling. I confessed after her. It's not your fault, Izuku. Achako took Izuku's hand. He ran his thumb over hers. Denki and Mina grinned widely. Pay up, the two of them said in unison. Ijiro and the other class of girls took out money from their pockets, which they gave to the electric and acid users. You guys made bets on our relationship? Izuku asked. Are you really surprised? Izuku, Achako asked. The boy shook his head, his mouth filled with waffles. Next question, who asked who to be the boyfriend or girlfriend? Toru asked. Izuku and Ochako raised their hands. I think it was already implied when we kissed, and we said I love you, Ochako said. Who made the first move, Satsuna asked. Ochako raised her hand. He asked if he could kiss me, but I wanted to kiss him first for being my hero and saving me from the zero-pointer. She half lied. Basically, Izuku said. Any details? Midori? Mina asked mischievously. Did you two have your hands all over each other like Mr. Sinclair and Mrs. Sinclair said they did when they first started dating? Minoshido, Ochako and Izuku exclaimed, covering their faces with their hands. We are not getting into any details, Ochako said with a muffled voice. Mina, please stop teasing Madabro and Yuraraka, Ijo said. But Iji, I need to know. Mina pouted. Also, Kirishima, you and Ashido seem mighty close and on first-name terms. When was this? Izuku asked the redhead. Me and Mina have been secretly dating since the sports festival. We figured that if you two are going to be open about your relationship, we would do the same thing. You got your gravity queen and I got my alien queen. Ijo said, putting his arm around Mina and kissing her on the cheek. Babe, stop. Mina giggled in her boyfriend's embrace. Babe? Ochako raised an eyebrow. You're already at that stage of your relationship? We don't need to rush into that stage too quickly, Ochako. Izuku reassured his girlfriend. I'll be sure of that, babe. Ochako teased. Izuku looked at his girlfriend in shock before his face turned red. Ochako. Don't break Midori just yet, Ochako. Mina giggled. The new couple finished up their breakfast. We're going to change into our uniforms. We'll see you guys at the theater, Ochako said. Morning cake and Izuku said as he and Ochako were walking out of the dining hall while Katsuki just entered. Shut up, Deku, Katsuki said as he went to sit down at Ijiro's table. What's up with those two? Shitty hair? Midabro and Yuraraka are dating now, Bakubro, Ijiro said. What? Katsuki exclaimed in outrage. Yep, first names and everything. Mina said with a Cheshire cat grin. When Izuku and Ochako got to the theater, everyone else was waiting outside. Why is everyone waiting outside? Izuku asked. The teachers signaled for them to be quiet. A few seconds later, they heard laughing inside. Is that laughter? Izuku asked. You hear it too, right? Midnight asked. Do you think they're doing something that the Lord won't condone? Ibarra asked. Everyone else except Minoru and a few perverse students fought the urge to smack themselves on the forehead. 
Shiozaki, I'm pretty sure Mr. and Mrs. Sinclair are not going to do something obscene in a movie theater, Tenya said. Maybe they're having, Minoru starts to say. Minta, Tenya stopped Minoru. What? I was going to say fun, Minoru countered. You know exactly what you were implying. You were implying sexual fun in front of Shiozaki, Tenya interjected. Haha, Ida said sex. Mina teased. Ashido. Izuku tried not to laugh. You guys are going to break Shiozaki. I appreciate the concern, Midoriya, but do not worry. Ibarra reassured Izuku. Um, okay, glad I can be of help, Izuku said. Our son and nephew's class seems fun, Masaru said to Mitsuki. Nephew? Shoto asked. Midoriya, you never told me. Me and Kaken are not related by blood, Izuku yelped out, interrupting the dual-powered boy. I only call them uncle and auntie because they're the closest thing to family, and they call me nephew because of the same reason. We're going to be late if we stay out here any longer, Aizawa said and opened the doors. When everyone went inside, they saw a Leicester and Giselle sitting on their couch. The time spirits had drinks in their hands, and they were laughing at a tablet in a Leicester's hand. Aizawa cleared his throat. The Americans stopped laughing, but had amused looks in their eyes. The tablet dissipated in thin air. The hosts stood up from their seats and walked up to their guests. They were dressed in blue today. Good morning, a Leicester and Giselle said to everyone. May we ask what is so funny that we can hear you outside of the theater? Aizawa asked. En en nope, Giselle let the en roll on her tongue before popping the pee. She looked around the fifty people that came into the theater and found who she's looking for. A Leicester, do you see what I see? Giselle asked, smiling and put a hand to her cheek. I see it. A Leicester said, the two of them clinked their glasses and took a sip. I'm so happy for you too. A Leicester and I were rooting for you to get together. Giselle said, looking at Izuku and Achako. Let us sit so we can get started as soon as possible. Was everyone expecting us to get together? Ochako asked as everyone went to their seats. I mean, other than Minta. I guess, yeah, the majority of us were. Mina said. I can't believe the nerd got a girlfriend before me. Katsuki grumbled. Why do you call Madabro a nerd when you got the third highest score in the midterms? Denki asked. You're just as big of a nerd as he is. He got the third highest score in the midterms? Itsuka asked in surprise. Ochako nodded in response to the question. Yeah, Bakugu was third in the class on our midterm exams, behind Yamomo and Ida. Wait, he placed higher than Madabro and Todoroki, Tetsu Tetsu asked. Madabro, Izuku asked, surprised that someone else used Ijiro and Denki's nickname. Yeah, you let Kiribro and Kaminari call you that, so I thought it'd be cool to call you that. Yeah, sure. That's cool, Tetsu Tetsu. Any friend of Kirishima's is a friend of mine, Izuku said. Thanks, man, Tetsu Tetsu grinned. Anyways, Midori was fourth and Todoroki was fifth, Mina said. These three are the strongest, most experienced boys in class, and they get the top marks. If only Bakugo wasn't an angry Pomeranian, he would be prime boyfriend material. I mean you should should have seen what happened at the training camp. Those four were... We are not talking about that, Izuku, Tenya and Katsuki suddenly yelled out, interrupting Mina. We don't talk about that, Shoto said in his monotone voice. Everyone was taken aback by the yelling. Class expected that sort of response from Katsuki, but not Izuku and Tenya. A Leicester and Giselle started laughing at the response. Wait, what happened at the training camp? May asked, narrowing her eyes at Tenya. And nothing, Hatsum. It was completely nothing. Tenya started getting nervous. Ah, uh, oh, Edis in trouble, Izuku, and the girls involved in the interrogation thought. Don't you, Hatsumi, Tenya Ida? You tell me right now, or. Hold on, Izuku interrupted May. I'm aware of you two sharing a room and Hatsum teasing you with your first name, Ida. But now she's saying your whole name. Is there something you're not telling us, Ida? He gave the class rep a raised eyebrow, even though he knew what was going on. 
It's nothing, Midoriya. Tenya tried to change the subject. Hatsum is just overreacting. Uh-huh. Hatsum, you wouldn't lie to your favorite customer, right? Izuku asked the crazy inventor with a smile. Um, no. Of course not. Muscles. It's just... May gave a nervous laugh. You two are dating, aren't you? Katsuki asked. Irk. Tenya said. Our class rep is actually dating. Denki said. Questions later. Many questions later. Izuku said. Can you believe Ochako and Midori are dating now? Toru asked, changing the subject. If it wasn't for me, they would not be dating in the first place. Minoru said, trying to take credit that the two were even dating. You accuse them of having sex in the dorms. You don't get to say anything. Kayoka said, narrowing her eyes. Mr. Sinclair was there so he can vouch that we weren't doing anything inappropriate in Ochako's room. Izuku said. How long were you even there, sir? Ochako asked Alistair. I arrived there two minutes after I sent Katsuki here. He was rather stubborn so it took a while for me to arrive. Then I went to her room and like they said, they were not doing anything inappropriate and they know the rest. Alistair said. Also you accused me of having sex with a girl from Shikesu during the provisional exam. Izuku said, trying to hide his disgust both from the accusations and that it was really Himiko. I'm lucky that a rumor didn't spread. Well that, and the green sparks that you showed defending your lady, that was manly of you. Tetsu Tetsu said before giving out a whistle. Wait, what are you talking about? What green sparks? Izuku asked, looking confused even though he had a feeling he knew what Tetsu Tetsu was talking about. You don't know? Tenya asked. Izuku shook his head. Will someone tell me or am I going to be kept in the dark about this? Damn it, Deku. When Grapestain was insulting your Araka, you kinda snapped, giving the extras the chills and green sparks were surrounding your body. Katsuki said, not trying to sugarcoat the event. Izuku figured that somehow he must have used one for all even though a Leister said that quirks don't work here. How did that even happen? Let me try something, Izuku said, standing up. One for all full cowling 8% Izuku internally said, trying to use one for all. He looked around and didn't see any of his signature sparks. I got nothing, Izuku said, giving a shrug. Is that alcohol? Aizawa asked, pointing at the glasses in a Leicester and Giselle's hands. Yes, it's scotch to be exact, a Leicester said. On the rocks, Giselle said. Wait, are you too drunk? Denki asked. You hold a higher standard than all of us. You cannot be drinking, Tenya said, chopping the air. Tenya. A Leicester interrupted, pinching the bridge of his nose. Giselle and I cannot get drunk. Completely. At all. The audience looked in disbelief at the host and hostess. But you act like normal humans. You're drinking. You laugh. You show sass. That doesn't make sense, Kayoka said. We don't understand all of the time spirits gig, but here's what we do know. Giselle said, lifting her hand up. We have emotions, we do not need sleep, we do not get hungry or thirsty, we cannot get drunk, and we cannot feel pain. With each point, she put a finger down. The powers are just a plus one. So what do you do at night while the rest of us are sleeping? Midnight asked. Watching anime, a Leicester admitted. Do you ever miss your old life? Achako asked. The Sinclair smiled. Well, of course we do, a Leicester said. We had three kids, two sons and one daughter that we watched grow to adults with children of their own until our last breath. But life doesn't go on forever. Only the love for each other. Giselle said, intertwining her fingers with her husband's fingers. Mama's boy, a Leicester muttered in English. Daddy's girl, Giselle retorted back. You always turned my baby girl against me when it came to her dolls. Daddy, buy this for me. Daddy, buy that for me. You spoiled her when it should have been me. That's my fault. Somehow age always managed to get extra servings of food. What about that? 
You should be lucky Eric turned out to be more like Mum somehow. Pony and present Mike laughed, while everyone looked at the married couple in confusion, while they were arguing in English. Are you two always like this? Aizawa deadpanned. Yes, a Leicester said in Japanese. Despite our little heated argument, we still love each other dearly. How did everyone here enjoy their first day? Giselle asked. It sucked like hell. I want my quirk back, Katsuki exclaimed. Denied, Giselle said. Our house, our rules. Now you get the experience of the quirkless. You should learn from it. Katsuki, Izuku won the obstacle race of the sports festival without using one for all, and you don't see him complaining. Katsuki growled, but he didn't say anything since his mom was glaring at him because he was on thin ice. If we're done arguing, it's almost time to start episode 7. A Leicester stated. Chapter 12, Deku vs. Kaken. One more thing, Principal Nezu Sir. The Chimera turned to a Leicester, who snapped his fingers. Nezu's recliner suddenly had a built-in tray attached to it, and there was a steaming cup on a small plate on top of the tray. A fresh steaming cup of Earl Grey from my personal collection. If you want any type of tea, you'll have it in an instant. You have wonderful taste and thank you, Mr. Sinclair. Nezu took a sip of the Earl Grey. This is marvelous. How do you make it so fast? Present Mike asked as a Leicester raised his glass to the principal. I don't reveal my secrets, a Leicester said. The food is instantly made, but the tea is brewed by a server. But other than that, a Leicester brews his own tea, Giselle said, making her husband sigh. Is there anything you don't drink? Midnight asked. I'm not a big fan of coffee, though I still drink it. A Leicester answered in a nonchalant tone. Aizawa turned to look at the time spirit. You're not a big fan of coffee? Aizawa asked. Coffee is more of Giselle's liking than mine, a Leicester said. She needed the caffeine when she would work on her designs late nights. Don't act like you never needed the caffeine as well back in grad school. We both needed it. A Leicester chuckled at that. It's 11 m. Let's start the show. Giselle pressed a button on the remote and the lights dimmed. Time to read the manga, she thought and pressed play, starting the episode. She made two tablets appear and gave one to a Leicester, taking her heels off and putting her feet up on his lap. Always the carefree one. A Leicester shook his head and began reading from where he left off from last time. The episode started with a recap of episode 6. Hey, do you really think Deku has a quirk? Katsuki asked. You saw how he threw that ball. Tenya stated. Was he seriously tricking me all these years? Katsuki thought as his body shook from rage. I'm gonna roast that damn nerd today. I didn't need to see that scary look on Bakugu's face again. Toru said, rubbing her arms. He can be a real pain, sure. But his strength and his confidence and his ambition. Not to mention his quirk. They're all so much greater than mine, Izuku said solemnly. But that just means that I have to do better. He put his respirator on. I refuse to lose today. All right, let's begin the indoor combat training. All Might's voice boomed through the speaker. Team A and Team D, your time starts now. Katsuki appeared from one of the hallways and charged at Izuku with his arm back, preparing his attack. The green net dove out of the way from the extended arm and explosion from Katsuki's surprise attack, tackling Ochako out of the way. There's Midori's awesome dodging again, Mina said. Katsuki waved away the smoke from his explosion, a crevice in the building from the use of his quirk. What's the matter, Diku? the explosion user taunted. Afraid to stand up and fight me. Katsuki ran towards Izuku, pulling his right hand back. I won't hurt you so bad that they'll have to stop the fight. Just close, Izuku grabbed Katsuki's arm. Wow, look at those moves, Ochako exclaimed excitedly. Impossible. How'd he know? He's not that good, Katsuki thought. Izuku did a judo flip on the blonde, who spit out saliva. The correct term is you underestimated Midabro, Bakugo, Tetsu Tetsu said. You can call me Deku, 
but I'm not the same helpless, defenseless kid anymore. You hear me? I've changed. From now on, Deku is the name of a hero. Achako smiled as she heard Izuku's declaration again. I'm glad that I inspired you to turn that insult of a nickname into what it means to you now. You always inspire me, Ochako. The opening plays. New lovebirds. I want details. Giselle demanded, looking up from her tablet and making the majority of the audience laugh. Who confessed first? Here we go, Alistair said, putting his tablet down. Are you putting your feet on Mr. Sinclair's lap? Tenya asked, making everyone face bomb. That is highly inappropriate. Tenya Ida, are you telling me what I can or can't do in my own home? Giselle asked. Her eyes narrowed in a non-threatening way, but the class rep didn't need to know that. No, ma'am, Tenya said and bowed. My apologies. I thought so, Giselle said. A Leister pinched her leg through her leggings. She smacked his hand in response, getting a chuckle out of him. Don't scare the children, dear, a Leister said. Not another interrogation, Izuku said, covering his face. Ochako giggled and raised her hand, while patting her boyfriend on the arm with the other. Izuku did technically confess first, which I told him about. But he said I can take this one. I didn't know if he was going to confess first, so I took the chance to explain a few things, then I confessed that I love him and everything that I love about him. I'm glad that she confessed first. It made me realize how oblivious I was all this time to Ochako's love for me. Izuku said, removing his hands from his face. I confessed after her. You're still young, Izuku, Jizel said. I didn't start dating until I was 18 only because I was naive when it came to the dating sh tick. Then there was also the family, a Leister said, making Giselle smack his hand again. Next question, who asked who to be the boyfriend or girlfriend, a Leister asked. Izuku and Ochako raised their hands. I think it was already implied when we kissed and we said I love you. The latter said, making Giselle squeal. I'm going to have a heart attack from the cuteness. Giselle hugged herself, making a Leister shake his head. You're a time spirit. You don't get heart attacks. A Leister said, making Giselle cover his mouth this time. That made their audience laugh again while the time spirit looked at his wife with a sideways glance. You talk too much, darling. I'm asking the questions from here. Giselle said, Who made the first move? Ochako raised her hand. He asked if he could kiss me, but I wanted to kiss him first for being my hero and saving me from the zero-pointer. A Leister smirked from behind Giselle's hand. I'm pretty sure that's not the only reason you kissed him first. And the interrogation is over? It's showtime. Giselle said, taking her hand off a Leister's mouth, and she went back to the manga. He gave her a deadpan look before going back to reading. I am so getting you back for that, a Leister thought. The screen showed Katsuki on the left and Izuku on the right. Kaken and I grew up in the same neighborhood, so we've known each other since we were little kids. Narrator Izuku stated. Little Izuku was nervously looking at a gate, which had signs that warned, no trespassing, and you can't go in there. Come on, let's fight bad guys, younger Katsuki said as pointed toward the forest. The boy with the long fingers, the chubby boy with wings, and another boy with dark hair cheered excitedly. Oh, yeah, younger Izuku cheered nervously. Bakugo, you shouldn't break the rules. You won't set a good example to the future generation and to your peers. Tenya said with his usual robotic movements, says the one who went after the hero killer Shoto and Izuku thought. So you guys knew the lackeys from middle school since you were little kids. Denki said. But what happened to the kid with wings? Katsuki shrugged. He said something about his family moving to a different city. I haven't heard from him since. A Leister and Giselle looked at each other before taking a sip of their scotch. All the other neighborhood kids followed him around. It seemed like he could do anything. Izuku continued to narrate. And no matter what he decided to do, he was always so confident. I thought he was the coolest person I'd ever met. 
However, after his quirk manifested, he started to change. You're shaking in your boots, you're so scared, but you want to fight me anyway. Present Katsuki said and activated his quirk in his right hand into a number of tiny explosions. That's why I hate you. Here's the sad truth. All men are not created equal. When I was four years old, I learned that some kids have more power than others. It's Midori's famous line again, Toru said. But why is he repeating it, Minoru said? To remind us of the sad truth of our world today. Aizawa said, and the other teachers nodded. Episode 7, Deku vs. Kekken. Bakugo, come in. Give me a status report. Where are you? Tenya ordered. Just shut up and defend the weapon, Katsuki ordered. I've got more important things to worry about. Are you forgetting what our mission is? Tenya asked. He hung up on me. This isn't the time for radio silence. We're supposed to be partners. This is the first time we saw you this frustrated, Ida, Mina said. I apologize, Tenya said. The other four teenagers involved in rescuing Katsuki didn't say anything. Hey, who's Bakugu talking to? Ajiro asked. I'm not hearing anything. Can we get any sound with this video? At least we now get to hear what's going on, Ajiro said. All Might pointed to his earpiece. He's got a radio in his ear so he can talk to his partner. I gave it to him before the match started along with a map of the building. Also this, a roll of capture tape. Wrapping this around your opponent means you've apprehended them and they're out for the rest of the game. So there's a 15-minute timer and the good guys have no idea what floor the nuclear weapon is hidden on, right? Mina asked. Correct, All Might stated. Then the heroes are clearly at a disadvantage here, a big one. Mina pointed out. Real pro heroes have to outwit villains on a daily basis. That's life. Even when the odds aren't in our favor, we fight. All together, All Might boomed, hoisting his arm up. Plus Ultra, the students in the theater yelled out with the on-screen 16 students. Monsieur, he's on the move. Yuga said, looking at the screen. H.M., All Might asked, turning back to the screen. Katsuki blasted forward and tried to plant a kick, which Izuku blocked. Yuraraka, go, Ochako ran off in the other direction. Ballsy move, Katsuki taunted. Think you can take me alone? He looked at Izuku in shock. He's using the capture tape. The majority of the audience looked surprised especially class uh, since they saw that move from their homeroom teacher yesterday in the sixth episode. Hero notebook no. 10. Page 18 Izuku thought as a picture of the said notebook appeared. The notebook opened to a page on Aizawa. Luckily, I got to see Eraser Head's moves in action. You saw how his scarf worked just once and you copied it to a T? Mina asked. Izuku scratched the back of his head shyly. Well, I got some notes on Mr. Aizawa before he went underground. I mean, he's so cool with that scarf. I can't argue with that, Hitoshi thought. Aizawa always tried to stay out of the media, and this was Izuku's 10th hero notebook while he was on 13th in his last year of junior high. He used my moves just by seeing them once. You're full of surprises, problem child, Aizawa thought, looking at Izuku. I know that look, Shota. Midnight said. The erasure hero sighed and said, He really did surprise me. He looked at Izuku. Honestly, I don't even know if he'll ever stop surprising me. Are you playing favorites now, show? Present Mike asked with a sly grin. I don't know what you are talking about, Zashi. Aizawa said blankly. Nezu suddenly cackled in his seat and the teacher shuddered at the sound of it. Katsuki let off another blast and Izuku dodged. I was right. Little guy's really good, Rikido said in the monitoring room. He's holding his own and he hasn't even used his quirk yet. Hanta exclaimed. Thanks, guys. No sweat, man, Rikido said. Yeah, man, Hanta said. Not surprised. He's always been pretty good at taking action in crisis situations, all might thought. The scene flashback to the sludge villain attack. 
Another flashback was shown of All Might carrying Izuku on one shoulder while reading his hero analysis notebook. Plus, he spent years taking notes on different heroes. He internalized everything he learned. Those lessons are in his blood now. That fanboy knowledge is paying off and driving him forward. Izuku yelped and turned to his mentor. You read through my notebook? All Might chuckled. Of course, my boy. How do you think I signed it? I had a little bit of curiosity when I saw your notebook, so I couldn't help but read it. Your notes are quite fascinating. Izuku had his hands covering the lower part of his face, having a fanboy moment. All Might read my notebook. He actually liked it. Do you have other signatures? Nidori? Mina asked. Izuku looked bashful. I got the autographs of the teachers and a few heroes. He kicked first this time. He's switching things up so I can't predict his moves. Does that mean he's worried? I wasn't worried. I was sick of you predicting my moves, Katsuki yelled. Seriously, can you not ruin the vibe? Giselle asked. You know that you were worried. Izuku started running away. Get back here, Deku, Katsuki yelled after him. The ash blonde growled in frustration and ran after him. A game of cat and mouse. Smart move, Greeny. Satsuna said, nodding in approval. It gives you enough time to make a plan. I'm not going to be able to fight him at close range now. I need some kind of plan, Izuku thought as he was running. Katsuki ran through one of the hallways then into another hallway and into another hallway. Damn it! You were tricking me for years by acting weak. Bet you were laughing behind my back, huh? The blonde growled in frustration. So where's that flashy power of yours now? Izuku looked shocked momentarily before clenching his teeth. I mean technically you could say it was a misdiagnosis and it would be hard for you to use because it's a stockpiling quirk even at a young age, but hey, I'm just rambling. May said. Let's see how it compares to mine. Small explosions appeared from Katsuki's hands. Quirk or no, you'll never beat me, Deku. Famous last words, Bakugu, Mizo said. That guy has some real anger issues. It's kind of scary, Denki said. Midoriya told me that young Bakugu thinks very highly of himself. But this level of pride is something else. It may end up being his demise. All Might thought while Katsuki blew up a door and looked around for Izuku with fierce determination. Ijiro patted Katsuki on the shoulder. Don't worry, Bakubro. You've gotten better since then. Most of the time, Kayoka said. On the second floor, Izuku was breathing heavily. Good, he's completely forgotten about my partner just like I thought. The scene shifted to show Tenya standing next to the fake weapon. If they wanted to send someone out to stop us here, it should have been Ida. He's way faster after all. That probably means Kakin's gone rogue. The two of them aren't working together as a team. If we had to take those two on head to head, our chances of winning would be pretty low. They've got such strong quirks. Teamwork isn't Kaken's forte. Denki teased. Shut it, Sparky, and don't call me that. If I can't call you that, why do you let Madabro do it? Denki asked Katsuki, who didn't answer. A visualization of video game caricatures appeared. I can't go after the weapon right now or Kaken will follow me, and if we both try to take him down, we'd probably run out of time. So we stay split up for now. I have to trust Yuraka. She'll find the weapon in Ida, and then I'll join her for a two-on-one fight. That's how we'll win. They look so cute. Mina gushed. You even visualized Bakugu's scowl. I don't think I visualized it like that, Izuku said. Katsuki blasted open another door. I just have to capture Kaken down here, on my own. I can do it as long as I don't get too close to his hands. Stop hiding, Katsuki's yell snapped Izuku out of his thoughts. Come out and face me, you coward. By the way, I've been meaning to tell you, Kek and Izuku thought. Izuku flashed back to that fateful day in Aldera Jr. You're even worse than the worst of these rejects. Aldera Katsuki taunted. You really think they'd let someone like you in when they could have me? If they knew about your past they probably wouldn't even let you in. Tsuyu stated bluntly. We have already discussed this, Mrs. Sui. 
Nezu stated. Please refrain from bringing up Bakugo's past mistakes regardless of how terrible they were. No, wait. I'm not trying to compete against you, Kaken. Aldra Izuku said, trying to appease the sneering blonde. You got to believe me. I take back everything I said. You tell him, Greeny, Setsuna exclaimed as she and the other students cheered. As he was walking through one of the hallways, Katsuki flashed back to when he pinned Izuku against the wall in Aldera, when the former found that his former friend got into Yua High. Like it or not, you can't stop me, Aldera Izuku exclaimed with fierce determination. From now on, Deku is the name of a hero. If I'm right, we will see more from Bakugu's perspective now. Nezu stated, He's just a little bug, Katsuki thought. A little bug that defeated you. Momo corrected. Didn't you criticize Izuku for being reckless with that last hit? Ochako asked. Momo blushed in embarrassment. True, but had I known that Midoriya had a plan, maybe I would have been less judgmental and I would have decided him as the MVP of the match. Izuku chuckled. I appreciate it. Yeah, Yurazu, but that last hit did happen. I'm just curious, though, how badly you criticized me. Wow, you're so awesome, younger Izuku's excited voice exclaimed. That's baby Midori's voice, Toru said. Younger Katsuki was bouncing a rubber ball as younger Izuku watched excitedly. Whatever, this is nothing, younger Katsuki bragged. Younger Izuku suddenly exclaimed in pain as the rubber ball he was holding rolled away. Jeez, Izuku, you really can't do anything right, can you? Katsuki taunted as Izuku rubbed his head. Does everything have to be a competition for you, Bakugo? Tetsutetsu asked. Katsuki pointed at Izuku's name on the pail. Look, you can read the last part of Izuku's name as Deku. Katsuki. Mitsuki growled angrily in her seat. Whoa, so you can read that? Younger lackey number two asked excitedly. Well, obviously, Katsuki said proudly. Deku. That must be what you must call a helpless loser who's completely useless. So that's where it came from, Mina said in disdain. Strike one Achako thought and squeezed her boyfriend's hand in comfort as he began to tense up seeing these memories again. Why are you being so mean, Kakin? Izuku asked. Why don't you understand? Younger Katsuki's voice echoed as the screen turned black. Understand what? Hanta asked. Katsuki skipped a rock across the water. Dude, that has to be a new record. Younger lackey number two said. I bet it is. Katsuki bragged. Why are kids so dumb? Kayoka grumbled as the other neighborhood kids praised younger Katsuki. Where's yours? Katsuki asked Izuku. Well, uh, it sank, Izuku said dejectedly. More like brats. Itsuka grumbled as the kids laughed at younger Izuku. It's just a rock. The screen went black again. Why can't you do anything right? Younger Katsuki's voice asked. The scene transitioned to Katsuki and Izuku's preschool. Miniature explosions were popping from the former's hands. Awesome. The younger version of the lackey with elongated fingers said. You're so lucky, younger Izuku exclaimed in excitement. You gotta be kidding me. Izuku growled when he saw the preschool teachers. Izuku, is everything okay? Ochako asked. Out of all the people that I have to see again in these flashbacks, she was the last person that I wanted to see. Izuku said, his tone the same, making everyone realize that he was talking about his preschool teacher. Impressive. I bet you that it's going to grow into an amazing quirk. The male preschool teacher said, Definitely. The female teacher agreed with her colleague. A flashy quirk for a future hero. It's perfect. Didn't Midoriya say that in the conference room? President Mike asked. All Might nodded. It appears that when young Bakugo manifested his quirk, it added to his arrogance. The constant praise that he must have received certainly didn't help matters. The screen went black once more. Yeah, you're right, younger Katsuki thought. I am amazing. In fact, I bet that there's no one as great as I am. Well, someone certainly had his head stuck in the door, Momo said. I don't know, yeah, Momo, 
You seemed rather stuck up the first day, Kayoka said. I had an excess of pride, but I wasn't that bad, was I? Momo asked. Izuku and Ochako shook their heads. All rich people seem like that. You get used to it. Giselle said. Hey, a Leicester said in an offended tone. Giselle poked her husband's chest. You are a different case, Mr. Despite all the gossipers, nobody in grad school knew you were rich. You were always formal and proper. Can we go back to our business? A Leicester asked. It's a little early to be talking about my money status. If you say so, Giselle teased. The scene flashed back to Izuku and Katsuki walking in the forest. Wow, you're so lucky. Your quirk is amazing, Kaken. When I get mine, I hope it's just as cool. Izuku complimented his childhood friend. Whatever Deku, Katsuki said. No matter what power you have, you'll never be able to beat me. Now we're back to Bakugo thinking he's more superior than anyone else. Kayoka snarked. A worthless bug for me to smash Katsuki thought before he walked up the stairs to the next floor. Hey, did you hear? Deku doesn't have a quirk, like none. One of the kids said as younger Izuku sat on the floor almost catatonic. What? Really? It's called being quirkless. That's dumb. What a loser. He's so lame. Don't worry about it, okay, Izuku? The preschool teacher said, trying to reassure the sad child. Maybe you should be reprimanding the other children instead. Aizawa said, his hands on his capture scarf. It's in the past, Shoda. You can't change it. Midnight said, You're a total failure, Deku younger Katsuki thought. The students grumbled upon seeing Katsuki putting down their classmates so much. Izuku's anger flared hearing his rival calling him a total failure. He was seriously thinking about taking back what he said about Katsuki being a hero. Katsuki. Mitsuki growled in her seat. Seeing this made her realize how much she failed as Izuku's auntie. Strike to Ochako thought. You're not a failure, Izuku. H.M. Izuku said, not wishing to say much since four days ago, he felt like a failure. Forward march, and here we go. Members of the agency Bakugo. Katsuki chanted as he led the march with the three neighborhood kids and Izuku behind him. Soundo. Despite their dislike of Katsuki, the majority of students couldn't help but gasp in shock at the younger version of the blonde falling into the creek. So this is where it all started, Aizawa said. Keken, younger lackey number two said. Hey, you okay down there? The pointy hair kid asked. Oh, don't worry. Kaken is super tough. The dragon-winged kid reassured. Were you okay, Bakubro? Hydro asked. Of course I was. That fall was nothing, Katsuki said. I was just fine on my own, Deku older Katsuki said as his younger self shook the water out of his hair. Hurry up and get back up here. Sure, just give me one second. I didn't need your stupid help present, Katsuki said, while the sound of footsteps were heard which younger Katsuki noticed. Younger Izuku put his hand out. Are you all right? Are you hurt? Awa, you are such a sweetheart, Midori. Mina gushed. Bakubro, tell me you didn't reject his hand. Ajiro said as he watched the expression on his friend's younger self change. The Katsuki sitting next to him didn't say anything. I was worried you might have hit your head or something. A light shone down on Ibarra, who had her hands in her usual praying position. May this boy's light continue to shine regardless of the hardships he faced and prosper to become a great hero. Everyone looked at Ibarra in shock, wondering how she got a light to shine on her in this dark room. Where is that light coming from? Satsuna asked. First during the sports festival, and now here. There is no possible way that there should be a light shining in here, but the Lord knows how to work in strange ways. A Leicester said as he and Giselle were looking up in confusion. Really, author? A light shining on Ibarra. Are we doing this? Here? Right now? But you looked at me like I was some kind of weakling. The grumbling increased and glares were shot toward Katsuki. Mitsuki looked enraged. 
Are you crazy, Katsuki? Izuku tried to help you, and you thought he was looking down on you? You bullied him just for that. Kaken, I couldn't just stand there and watch you die. Aldera Izuku said when he tried to save Katsuki. Like you. But I'm not. I'm so much better than you are, Katsuki thought as he walked through the hallway of the building with a livid expression. Yet in the end, here you are because the puny, weak, defenseless, quirkless Deku you and everyone else used as a punching bag so you can scare him into not being a hero tried to save you while you were a damsel in distress. I must have been so pathetic compared to the heroes that were there, Izuku said bluntly. At this point, he was tired of Katsuki's pridefulness and arrogance in these flashbacks. Everyone turned to look at Izuku in shock except Katsuki. The way the Greenettes said his hero name was with disdain they never heard from him before. Then they remembered it was a derogatory nickname he fought to change. Giselle paused the show. Things just got dark really quick, the Sinclairs thought. Tenya looked at his friend. Midoriya, you shouldn't. Ida, unless you have been through what I have, I suggest you don't say anything. Izuku snapped, interrupting the class rep and creating a gloomy and tense atmosphere. Nobody would ever understand the hardships he's been through. Ochako squeezed her boyfriend's hand lightly in comfort. My apologies, Tenya said. He's not lashing out, but he's still harboring some frustrations from the past, Aizawa thought. You weren't useless or pathetic, nerd, Katsuki surprisingly said. Even after all the shit I did to you that day, you tried to save me. Everyone was surprised by Katsuki's words. Izuku still felt the anger brewing in him, but it lessened by his rival's words. Eyes back to the screen. Giselle said, and she unpaused the show. Everyone turned back to the screen. The scene transitioned to Ochako watching Tenya behind one of the pillars in the weapon room. Found it. Now I just have to tell Deku and try my best to stay out of sight until he gets up here. The brunette was about to contact Izuku when the engine hero spoke out. Bakugu definitely has a villainous side, and that's exactly what we need to succeed in this mission. I need to temporarily devote myself to criminal intent. Yes, I won't fail this trial and risk bringing shame down on the Ida family name. Tenya clenched his fists. That means I must now embrace evil, to become a hero. Oh no, Achako giggled. Tenya looked embarrassed. Behold, I am the personification of villainy. Tenya said as he did a horrible villainous laugh. On screen Ochako was not the only person to burst into laughter at Tenya's evil laugh. The gloomy and tense atmosphere disappeared as the majority of the audience started laughing at the sudden change of the class rep. Even Izuku, who was suddenly moody, went back to his cheery self and started laughing at his friend's villainous act. So this is what I missed while I was downstairs. Ochako nodded. Ida definitely played the part. Even if I lost the match, I thought that I'd put some effort into the role I played. Tenya admitted. Like I said, villains thrive on chaos. They're not evil just to be evil. Aizawa said. Kayama, if the next words that come out of your mouth is that we should start an acting club for hero students after classes, you will be buying a new whip when we get back to Yua. Midnight immediately shut her mouth with a small pout. Yoraka, is that you? Tenya asked in his villain voice. Ochako stepped away from the pillar nervously. Yoraka, if I was in charge of this training exercise, I would deduct points for not remaining stealthy as a hero. Aizawa said. But he already heard me, Mr. Aizawa. Ochako countered. Then you remain silent and continue to stay hidden. Aizawa explained. Make him seem like he's going paranoid. Yeah, Kirby, even heroes gotta play a little dirty, Setsuna said. Kirby? Ochako spluttered. Most of the students started laughing, even Izuku. Why does Izuku get a better nickname than me? He's a green bean like me. Plus, when you pout, you look like Kirby especially with the blush marks. Setsuna said with a toothy grin. Ochako pouted proving her point. I knew you would come here alone the instant Bakugu ran off by himself and engaged with Midoriya. 
Your quirk allows you to float anything that you touch, but I prepared for that by hiding every object in this room for you to have nothing to use against me. Do-gooder. Tenya pointed at Ochako. My dastardly tricks have rendered you helpless. You blundered, hero. That's a smart move, Itsuka said, kind of like what Yui did. He really is playing the part, Ochako said. Um, Deku? I'm here. How's it going? Ida knows that I'm here. Sorry. Ochako said through her comms. But now he's monologuing. Monologuing, Giselle said. A hero's worst nightmare. Where are you? Near the middle of the fifth floor. Izuku looked up. Right above me. We probably don't have much time left now. We have to finish this fast, or they win. Izuku clenched his fist and stood up, extending the capture tape. I won't give up yet. I can capture Kaken. I won't lose. Katsuki's gauntlet glowed. Izuku turned to see the blonde behind them, simply standing there. The latter raised the gauntlet up, clenching a fist. I'm all loaded up. Toru shivered. This was scary. What does that mean? Itsuka asked along with the on-screen Izuku. Why aren't you using your fancy quirk? Don't tell me you're underestimating me, Deku. Katsuki said with a maniacal look in his eyes. Get over here and show me what you're really made of. You would be dead if he did use it, Mizo said. I didn't know that at the time. He threw the softball ten meters farther than you with one finger at full power. What did you think was going to happen to you if he used it on you instead of the building? Denki asked. Kyoko rolled her eyes. Bakugo thinks that he's some hotshot main character that has plot armor. A Leicester and Giselle smirked at that statement as they read the manga but didn't say anything. I have no choice. I have to face him. Right now Izuku thought in determination. Kaken, I'm not scared of you anymore, Izuku said. I knew I should have put him in a session with Hound Dog at some point, Aizawa said. Since you're such a stalker by now, you probably know how my quirk explosion works, Katsuki said in a smug tone. I secrete nitroglycerin like sweat from my hands and make it blow up. Imagine what I could do if I had a lot of it. That's right, these gauntlets aren't just for show. They've been storing up my sweat for one monster blast. Those gauntlets probably reek. May said in disgust. Surprisingly, not really. Hatsum, Izuku said. Unless you've experienced getting hit in the face by Kaken's explosions, you'd be able to get a faint smell of caramel. So that's why I smelled caramel when I faced back Hugo. Ochako said in realization. It was making me hungry. No, he's going too far all my thought. Young Bakugo, don't do it. You'll kill him. Wait, Midoriya. Didn't you say something about Bakugo's gauntlets ruining how cool his costume was? Itsuka asked with wide eyes, realizing what Katsuki meant by being loaded up. Yeah, you're about to see why. He'll be fine as long as he dodges, Katsuki exclaimed with that maniacal look in his eyes. He took out the pin and a giant explosion was released from his gauntlet, destroying the walls towards Izuku. Everyone's eyes widened in shock, except the Sinclairs, Class A and All Might. Ibarra prayed that she would never have to face the blonde since fire is her quirk's greatest weakness. Katsuki, were you trying to kill Izuku? Mitsuki asked in anger. Red flag number one, giant gauntlets that store his sweat. Giselle snarked at the teachers. Did any of you bother to look at his costume design? I'm looking at you. Eraser head since you're his teacher. The explosion caused the building to quake for Tenya and Ochako to feel it from where they were. Everyone in the monitoring room felt it as well. Come in, come in, Midoriya, All Might called out to his successor. Is that even allowed? Izuku asked in disbelief. It shouldn't be, Aizawa said, glaring at the retired pro hero. Him and Nezu wrote it down in their list of things they need to talk about. Izuku tensed up at Katsuki's maniacal laugh. Ochako looked at him worriedly when his hand clamped up. Izuku, are you okay? He looked and sounded like Shigaraki at that moment. Izuku said quietly as he put his free hand to his throat, 
remembering when the four-fingered grip of the villain got tighter. His mind made him disassociate from what was in front of him. Breathe, Izuku. Calm down. Don't panic. He's not here. Hey, what's happening to Madabro? Tetsutetsu asked. Not sure, Itsuka said. But it looks like what Bakugo did in the show triggered something in him. Ochako cupped Izuku's face and turned him towards her. Shigaraki is not here and he can't hurt you. Izuku and Ochako's friends, the parents, the teachers, and the Sinclairs smiled as the new couple shared their first public kiss. Once they separated, Izuku smiled and pressed his forehead to Ochako's as the transition screen appeared. Thank you. Bakugu, answer me. Tenya asked, What is going on down there? Did you cause that blast? Really, Ida? After a day of seeing Bakugu, you're asking that? Kayoka asked. I didn't expect him to do something that rash. Now is my chance, Achako thought as she ran forward. If I can claim that weapon, that means we win. Tenya noticed and ran towards her. Not so fast, hero. Ochako used her quirk on herself and jumped. I just have to touch the weapon. In one move, this will all be over. Since when can she make herself float? Tenya asked. Ochako looked embarrassed. That's how my quirk appeared. My parents found me half a meter above my bed on a school day. Thankfully it was during the winter, otherwise I would have floated out the window. Ochako put her hands together and yelled, Release! This special move is hard, but it's worth it, Ochako thought as she was a few centimeters from touching the fake weapon. But before Ochako could touch it, exhaust pipes came out of Tenya's legs, as he used his quirk to secure the weapon and rushed off with it to the other side of the room, keeping it from her reach. She let out a small scream and rolled on the floor until her lower back hit the wall. Several of the students winced. Ouch! That looked like it hurt. Mina said. Ochako laughed. Yes, it did. Admirable attempt, but your quirk's no threat if you can't touch anything. I can easily keep this weapon out of your reach until time runs out. Tenya said and did a villainous laugh. It's not over. I won't let Deku down, Ochako thought with a frustrated look. I guess you were trying to impress Midori since the first week. Ha, Ochako? Toru teased. Toru, Achako exclaimed. Did you think you were free from the teasing just because you're dating Midori? Mina asked with a smirk. Oh man, I didn't stand a chance, did I? Denki asked. No, you didn't, Kayoka said. Achako and Green were a sure deal. Most of us saw it coming. I didn't, Minoru exclaimed. Now Midoriya has his eye on you like a hawk. Yuga reminded him. The smaller boy gulped at the reminder. The majority of the audience were so busy listening to the conversation that they almost forgot about what was in front of them. Come and get me, Katsuki taunted. The gauntlets make it so he can use his powers at long range. I'm not safe even if I stay away from him. So what do I do, Izuku thought in frustration. Izuku put his hand to his comms. Come in, what's the situation? It's not good. Ochako exclaimed in panic. Katsuki looked unhinged. Are you ignoring me again? I'll get your attention, says the classmate who ignored his partner since the start of the exercise. Tenya huffed, exasperated at how hypocritical Katsuki was acting. Sir, isn't this getting out of hand? Ijo asked. That Bakugu is acting real crazy. He's gonna kill him. Thanks, Kirishima, Izuku said. Nah, it's nothing, man. Me and Bakubro might be best friends now, but I'm not gonna simply watch him kill you because of his pride and grudge. Ijiro said reassuringly. Not so. All Might stated. Ijiro looked confused. The scene flashed back to what Katsuki said at the beginning of the episode. Despite his fierce posturing, he's not actually trying to kill Midoriya, but still. Bakugo. All Might called out into the mic. Use that stored-up power again, and I'll stop this fight. Your team will lose. Huh? Katsuki exclaimed in shock. To employ such a strong attack indoors is inviting the destruction of the stronghold you should be protecting. All Might stated, 
That's a poor strategy whether you're a hero or a villain. The penalty would be a massive loss of points. Do you want to win or do you want to beat Midoriya to a pulp? Nito asked sarcastically. Choose one, Bakugo. I know that as a teacher, I should stop this fight now. But... But what? Wait until Midoriya has to be taken to recovery girl for major injuries. Aizawa asked with narrowed eyes. I wanted young Midoriya to gain some self-confidence. Let him stand up for himself. Even though Aizawa wanted to argue his case, he couldn't help but agree. Izuku was standing up to his bully more in this exercise than he ever did in his life. Even though these two teenagers were trying to prove something in this exercise, Izuku had so much to prove than the other. The pillar by the window. Get there now. Izuku ordered Ochako when he noticed Katsuki heading towards him. Fine then, Katsuki yelled out as he rocketed towards Izuku with his explosions. We'll fight hand to hand. I feel sorry for his voice actor, sub and dub. Giselle whispered. A Leister chuckled, nodding in agreement. It's no good. I can't dodge this. I'll have to counterattack. Like this, Izuku punched forward, but before it could land, Katsuki blasted an explosion into the former's face, vaulting over him. Then he hit Izuku with another blast, making Izuku wince in pain. Most of the audience members winced. I don't want to be saying this, but I got hit much worse than that, and not by Kakan, so don't give him the evil eye. Izuku said, remembering the midterm exam and All Might's New Hampshire smash. Aizawa glared at All Might. What was that move? Ajiro asked. Shoto narrowed his eyes slightly. He doesn't come off as a guy with a strategy, but he's actually quite intelligent. Ajiro turned to Shoto. What are you talking about? The redhead asked. He changed his trajectory while in midair using a blast that doubled as a smokescreen. Shoto explained while a playback of the scene was shown. Very clever. A faint attack like that requires an extreme amount of precision. He had to calculate the physics and demonstrate control over his quirk. Momo stated. Holy water. Giselle said under her breath. A Leister shook his head knowing that Giselle was ready to unleash her wrath on the small purple bald boy. But he knew that this was nothing compared to what would be coming up in the later episodes. Women. It's clear that Bakugo had practice before getting into Yua. Nezu stated, It reminds me of when you were a student, All Might, a prodigy when it comes to his quirk. Just how old is Nezu? All the students thought. Compared to him and Izuku's other classmates, his quirk is perfect for heroics unlike him. Their quirks are simply garbage. That imbecile in the first episode gave those other students false hope. Giselle said, partially agreeing with the chimera. And Deku? What about him? Katsuki asked. I think everyone knows it already, including you. He is a hero, and he didn't need a quirk to prove that. A Leister said. Ugh, Bakugo is uber-talented. I hate it. Denki complained. Then maybe you should train more, Sparky. Katsuku snarked. Well, maybe you shouldn't be a big jerk all the time. Denki countered. Here it comes, nerd, the famous right hook you were whining about, Katsuki exclaimed while slamming his gauntlet into Izuku's elbow, making him wince in immense pain. Deku, Katsuki grabbed Izuku's arm and spun him around with his explosions before slamming the ladder into the ground. Don't you ever forget what you are, a weakling. Come on, Midoriya, show Bakugo that you're not a weakling, Itsuka yelled out. The other students cheered for Izuku. He's not giving me any time to form a strategy. I can't beat him without a quirk after all. He's too good, Izuku thought. I have no choice. I have to use it. This is hard to watch. All he has to do is wrap tape around him, not kill him. Mina said fearfully. Yeah, no kidding. What were you thinking, Bakugu? Tetsu Tetsu asked. Shut it, Steel Shima. Katsuki grumbled. I told you that this might show what I did to the nerd. Bakugo's certainly acting like a villain. Fumikage stated. I thought Midwaria was pretty amazing at the start of the fight, but he's completely outmatched in terms of combat power. 
Not to mention that Bakugo seems like a natural at all this stuff. My bad, Madabro. Dinky apologized. Don't worry about it, Kaminari. Izuku reassured the electrification user. I should end this. But, for his sake, I'll let it go on, All Might thought. You should have, All Might, Midnight said. Bakugo was going too far at this point. All Might, I'll let this slide since it was your first day. If it happens again, I'll have to fire you. Understood? Nezu said in a serious tone. All Might gulped and nodded. Be lucky that this only happened once, Alistair said. Izuku got up and started to run away. He's running away, Mina said as Izuku was shown on a screen fleeing from Katsuki in the monitoring room. Not very manly, but he doesn't have a choice. He's outgunned. Unless he has got some kind of plan, it's possible, Ijo said. The green-haired boy was standing in front of one of the broken windows. Katsuki was walking towards him. Why won't you use your damn quirk against me? Still think you can stop me without it? Katsuki asked, marching toward his former childhood friend. Itsuka scoffed, shaking her head. Talk about a one-track mind. Izuku looked down, his hair shadowing his eyes. That's not it, he said. You have been hiding your true power for years. What's the deal, Deku? Did you think you were better than me this entire time? Katsuki demanded. You definitely had a screw loose if you think Madabro would go through everything being quirkless just to mess with you. Tetsu Tetsu said. That's what you think? Izuku asked. Flashbacks of their past were shown. You idiot. I couldn't say it better myself, Midori. Toru said. I guess Bakugo's attitude rubbed off on the listener. Present Mike said with a chuckle. Izuku looked up at Katsuki. You have always been stronger, Kaken. I know that you're better than me, he clenched his fist. Can't you see? That's why I want to beat you, because you're amazing. You're even more of an idiot than I realized. Come at me, Katsuki said. Here it comes, the students thought except class A. The only other time I hear that much passion in his voice is when he talks about being a hero. In order to achieve his dream, he has to do this. Not for me, but for himself. All Might thought while Izuku was running toward Katsuki. The two jumped in the air and pulled back their right hands. Izuku's right arm glowed with red veins as he activated one for all in his right arm, while Katoki popped small explosions in his hand till it became glowing hot. Izuku shouted, Detroit, while Katsuki yelled incoherently. Wait, what? We saw that punch tank a zero-pointer. How is Bakugo still alive? Setsuna asked in shock. You don't think I can take one of those punches? Katsuki asked. No. The majority said, including his own mother. That's because I wasn't aiming for Kaken, Takage. Izuku pointed out. They're gonna kill each other, sir, Ijiro exclaimed. All Might was shown to be hesitating while the two teenagers were yelling incoherently. Both of you stop, the number one hero ordered. You're a Raka now, Izuku shouted, surprising his mentor. The audience were shocked when the on-screen Izuku suddenly called out an order to his partner in the midst of battle. Right, Ochako said as she grabbed onto a pillar. Was this part of the plant, Midoriya? May asked. Yep, the couple said in unison. I can't beat you, not in a one-on-one -on -one fight like this. But I can win, Izuku thought. He changed the direction of his fist downward, screaming, smash, while Katsuki launched an explosion at him at close range as the former did an uppercut. The uppercut released a lot of air pressure that caved the floors and ceiling above it, thus destroying the structure of the building, surprising the blonde. Once again, the audience watched the scene in shock. He destroyed three floors with one punch, Kosai said in surprise. What's happening? Tenya asked in shock. Oh, I see. Since I had removed all the objects that Yuraka could use her quirk on, you planned to use one for all to break the ceilings so that she could use it as projectiles. That's an impressive plan. Thanks, Ida, the couple said. Ochako used her quirk on the pillar she grabbed and used it. This is it. Sorry, Ida, 
she swung the pillar like a baseball bat while shouting, improvised special move, the comet home run, and the debris shot forward towards Tenya. In the name of villainy, I demand that you stop this, Tenya shouted. While Tenya was distracted by the debris flying at him, Ochako jumped across the chasm. She called out, release, while in mid-air, grabbing hold of the fake weapon and saying, I got it. No, the weapon, Tenya shouted. The audience cheered and congratulated Izuku and Ochako for their win. The latter blushed a bit at the compliments, while Izuku tried not to faint at the attention he was getting. Katsuki looked up as he trembled in rage. This was your big plan, from the very beginning, wasn't it? He looked towards Izuku. You were playing me this entire time, you bastard. I wasn't going to use it, because I can't control it, Izuku said in pain. The smoke was clearing up, showing his broken arm. My body just can't handle the backlash of my power yet. Mr. Aizawa said I'd be useless. The smoke finally cleared, showing the result of Katsuki's blast. The sleeve covering Izuku's left arm was torn off, showing his burnt arm. But this was all I could think of. This is the only way. I had any chance at winning. Everyone except All Might, Class A and the Sinclairs could only look in shock at the state that the on-screen Izuku was in. Inko was tearing up while the Bakugos were speechless. Now Bakugo sees how dangerous his quirk is, Nito said solemnly. In the monitoring room, the timer hit zero. Most of the students looked stunned. You did it, All Might said. All Might announced, the hero team wins, as Izuku collapsed. The ending starts to play. Everyone relaxed in their seats. That was intense, even more than when we were actually there, Mina said. Yeah, no kidding, Kayoka said. I bet you thought you had Midorbro all figured out how back you go, Tetsu Tetsu asked. Katsuki growled, but didn't say anything. All Might's music began to play. You kids still have a lot to learn, but I'll help you hero up, All Might exclaimed. Next time, Bakugo's start line. Young Bakugo's going to get all teary-eyed on us, All Might stated. Go beyond. Plus ultra, the students yelled out. The timer started. Same as yesterday, ladies and gentlemen. You have fifteen minutes. Giselle announced. That's the first time I heard Midoriya say his last name, Minoru said. I think that's just the episode title, Minta. I it doesn't count as me saying his name unless I actually say his family name out loud. The people involved in the conversation yesterday and the ones that Izuku told in the dining hall didn't say anything. Everyone got up to stretch or use the bathroom. Are you okay? Izuku, Ochako asked as she and Izuku stood up. Yeah, I'm okay, Ochako. Izuku reassured his girlfriend. He walked over to Tenya. Hey, Ida. I'm sorry about what I said. I let my frustration get the best of me, and I took it out on you. It's not your fault, Midoriya, Tenya said. Remember what I said yesterday. We now know how much you've been through, so I can't blame you for getting angry. Thank you. Izuku went to the back to grab water. Young Midoriya. He turned to see his mentor walking towards him. All Might. Are you okay, my boy? All Might asked in concern. I'm okay. Izuku reassured the former hero. With everything that has been happening, I guess those flashbacks brought something out in me that I didn't expect. It happens. Are you going to be okay? All Might asked. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Izuku went back to his seat and Ochako rested her head on his shoulder. Chapter 13. Bakugo's Start Line We need a schedule on who gets access to the remote. The way that it keeps changing hands randomly so far feels weird. Giselle said to a Leicester in English a few minutes before the episode started. I agree. I say every two episodes. We pass the remote so next episode I get the remote. As for the last episode, whoever does the previous episode gets the remote. Should we do the OVAs? We might as well, especially since the new ones are out. A Leicester said before realizing something. Hold on. 
That means that the OVA would count as the last episode for season one so I would get the remote then. Giselle groaned and bumped her head against her husband's shoulder, getting a chuckle from him while he ran his hand through her hair. Fine. There was one minute left on the clock. Everyone got back to their seats. When the timer hit zero, the lights dimmed and Giselle pressed play on the remote. It's showtime. Oh joy, a Leister said in a dull tone, putting his tablet to the side. After a year. Luckily we don't have to read a year's worth of manga since the last time this was updated. Oh hush, Giselle said, putting down her own tablet. What's up with those tablets? Denki asked the couple. Believe me when I say this, I'd rather be looking at this tablet than the screen most times. A Leister said, giving Giselle an unimpressed look, who in return gave a nervous giggle. I love you, Giselle said. The look on a Leister's face vanished, and he gave her a smile. I love you too. With that, he kissed her on the forehead. If Giselle wasn't a godly being in technical terms, she would blush so instead she just closed her eyes happily. Their so cute midnight thought with a smile. The episode started with preschool Katsuki and Izuku walking through the forest. This scene again? Toru whined. Yes. A Leister said simply as he swished around the ice in his cup before taking a sip. At least you girls get to see the closest thing to a Chibai Izuku. Giselle said in reassurance. Well, there is that, Mina said before pouting. I want to pinch baby Midori's cheeks, and now Ochako gets to pinch Midori's cheeks anytime she wants. Emina, Ochako exclaimed in embarrassment, while Izuku blushed a deep red. Ashido, please stop embarrassing your classmates, Tenya exclaimed while doing his usual hand-chopping motion. Mina stuck her tongue at him in response. Wow, you're so lucky. Your quirk is amazing, Kaken. Preschool Izuku complimented the blonde excitedly. When I get mine, I hope it's just as cool. Whatever, Deku. No matter what power you end up with, you'll never be able to beat me. Preschool Katsuki said with a confident smirk. The blonde's preschool self transitioned to his older self on the day of the quirk assessment test. The once confident smirk turned into an enraged snarl as his eyes twitched. He's just a little bug. Until the exam, he was nothing. The scene transitioned once more to the day of the battle training with Katsuki and Izuku running towards each other. A little bug I could crush if I wanted to. So where's that flashy power of yours now? The two once childhood friends powered up their attacks. Damn it, you were tricking me for years by acting weak. Bet you were laughing behind my back, huh? Let's see how your power compares to mine. Quirk or no, you'll never beat me, Deku. With that exclamation, Izuku launched a Detroit smash in an uppercut towards the roof as Katsuki set off an explosion in the former's face. I still can't believe Madabro managed to destroy three floors with one punch. Tetsu Tetsu said. Itsuka nodded. That power is gonna keep on adding up too. He'll likely be stronger than all might when he goes pro. The punch caused the glass of every window to shatter. What's happening? Tenya asked in shock. Improvised special move, the Comet home run, Ochako yelled out, using the pillar as a baseball bat. That was really well played, however it was reckless. Momo said. I've got it, Ochako said, hugging the fake bomb. The screen showed Katsuki looking up as he trembled in rage. So this was your big plan. I wasn't going to use it, Izuku said through pained breaths. Because I can't control it. My body just can't handle the backlash of my power yet. Mr. Isawa said I'd be useless, but this was all that I could think of. Damn Midoriya, you must have been in a lot of pain at that point, Yosu said. This is the only way I had any chance at winning. Katsuki looked in bewilderment as he went through flashbacks. Someone I look up to told me that I can become a hero. Izuku's words went through Katsuki's head once again as the green-haired boy fainted. That's why I applied. Like it or not, you can't stop me. The opening played. Nobody knew what to say until Denki suddenly talked. 
Man, who knew that the opening scene could give off so many emotions. You just realized? Kayoka asked. The scene showed the result of the two powerhouses' biggest attacks. Your indoor combat training is over. All Might announced. Ochako slid down the fake bomb, causing Tenya to panic. Are you okay? The latter asked with his arms flaying. The hero team were the Nikans, All Might announced. What a weird way for this to end. The losers are practically untouched, and the winners are both on the ground. Denki pointed out. How does the old saying go? Fumikage asked rhetorically. They may have lost the battle, but they've won the war. This class is intense, Tsuyu said. Yeah, no kidding. I'm still surprised that we had this class early in the year when we're just first years. Mina said. Don't you remember 13's words at the Asje? The combat training was to teach you how dangerous your quirks can be, Aizawa said. All Might was watching as two medical bots were taking Izuku out of the fake city on a stretcher. To the nurse's office, the medical robot in the front said, I know. The medical robot in the back said as they passed the hero, All Might then looked towards Katsuki whose hand was shaking. The robots act real smart for mechanical pieces of junk. They talk shit like this during training. I'm blasting every single one of them to hell. Katsuki grumbled. Once the robots take over, don't be surprised when they come for you first. A Leicester snarked, making Jaisel laugh. My attacks. Deku predicted them Katsuki thought as his hand was shaking. He made me look like an idiot and somehow managed to win the exercise. You've always been stronger, Kaken. Can't you see? That's why I want to beat you, because you're amazing, Izuku's words echoed in Katsuki's head. Everyone in the theater, especially Class A, the parents and the teachers looked worried seeing the on-screen Katsuki, hyperventilating on the verge of having a full-blown panic attack over losing the match. Does this mean if we really fought, if we didn't hold back at all, Deku would beat me with his quirk, Katsuki thought. More like you would be the bug that gets crushed. Jaisel finished the on-screen Katsuki's rant with her own words. Seriously, Bakugo, how were you more worried of how your power compares to others when Midori just destroyed three floors with one punch and from just wind pressure? Mina asked. I don't think anyone can survive that move. Izuku, All Might, and the Sinclairs didn't say a word, internally whistling innocently. What about the villain in Kamino? Shoto asked. We saw All Might defeat him with his ultimate move, and all it did was render him unconscious. The other students pondered that and wondered if any other villain in the future could be that strong. They then shuddered at that idea. All Might put a hand on Katsuki's shoulder, putting a stop to the hyperventilating. Young Bakugo, cool your jets, let's go review your work. All Might as Katsuki's eyes were the size of pinpricks. Whether you win or lose, you can always take something from an experience like this, as long as you're open to learning. Did anyone else notice that All Might's hand is probably the same size as Bakugo's head? Hanta asked. I wonder if Midori is going to be that gigantic, Toru said. Ochako blushed at the thought. Izuku's strong arms wrapped around her holding her up off the ground as he carried her around, latching onto him just like she had the fake weapon in training. But her boyfriend had a different reaction to that. Asterisk thud asterisk. Izuku, Ochako exclaimed in shock as her boyfriend fell out of his seat onto the floor, his face pale as a ghost. Everyone else was just as shocked by this reaction. Me a giant, like all might. Is that even possible? Izuku uttered out. I believe that All Might's hero form is a way for him to use one for all at its fullest. Momo said, trying to reassure Izuku. Episode 8, Bakugo's Start Line In the monitoring room, the giant screen showed that Team O won while Team D lost. Well, despite the results, the MVP of this exercise is young Ida. All Might announced. I was expecting it to be greeny, Setsuna said next to a silent Katsuki who had his head lowered and a nauseated Ochako, Tenya turned to look at All Might before giving out a shocked, huh. 
Shouldn't it be one of the heroes instead since they're the winners? Suyu asked. All Might hummed in approval at the question. Valid question. Why didn't I choose one of the two? Who has a guess? He asked, holding up his hand. Momo raised her hand. Sir, I can tell you why. Remember when I said you were stuck up? Yeah, Momo, Kayoka said. Ida embraced this challenge. He was the only one truly adapted to his assigned role. I'll explain. Momo said as the scene transitioned from All Might still holding up his hand to Katsuki whose eyes were covered by his spiky hair. I'll explain. Bakugo's judgment was clouded by a personal grudge against Midoriya. The screen transitioned to Katsuki releasing the pin on the gauntlet from the previous episode as Momo continued her analysis of the match. As you pointed out earlier, launching a large-scale attack indoors was a foolish move. It could have been disastrous. Similarly, Midoriya's plan was also poorly thought out. Considering the amount of damage he had received, he rendered himself helpless, not smart. I apologize for my words, Midoriya. Momo said in shame while her on-screen self dissected Ochako and Tenya's roles. You had a well-thought-out plan and out of pride. I basically said your plan was poorly thought out. But I believe that you did better against Bakugo than any of us could. Technically, the hero team won, yes. But they took advantage of the fact that this was training. They didn't respect the spirit of the trial. Momo finished her analysis. I thought it was survival training the way it was going. Giselle said nonchalantly, I know a few of you know how that felt. Most of class a shuddered at what Giselle said, knowing what she was talking about. Izuku waved it off. It's fine, Yayurazu. It's not like you could have heard my thoughts. Plus, with no control over one for all, I knew I had no chance once Kekin used his quirk mid-battle, so I was basically outmatched, and then I injured myself in the end just to win. So you're right. We only won because we took advantage of this being training. Just take the compliment, Green. Kayoka intervened. Yeah, Momo feels bad already. Plus, she's right. Only you had a better chance at facing Bakugo than any of us since you knew the way he fights. I knew I would have tinnitus if our team was going against him, and that's without his constant explosions. This girl really has a good eye on her, All Might thought, trembling slightly in shock. Yes, well you overlooked a few things. Young Ida could have relaxed a little bit in the exercise, but otherwise you nailed it. The hero finished in acknowledgement with a thumbs up. One should always start with the basics and develop themselves wholeheartedly to learning. That's the only real way to become a top hero. Momo stated with self-pride as the camera panned up from her legs, showing her standing in front of a Japanese crane painting with a kanji for start with the basics to develop depth of learning and devote oneself wholeheartedly written on it in fine calligraphy. The screen zoomed in on her her form taking on the rough hue of the introductory sketches as her name appeared on the screen. You tell them, prickly princess, Giselle said in English, making a Leicester laugh. Now if she can do something about that fan service costume. That painting is so manly, Idro said. If any of you want it in your room here, just ask and we'll have it put in your room. Giselle said. You could do that? Demke asked. That's so cool. Of course, Eleister said. We have our ways. Momo Yeyurazu, one of the four students admitted to the hero course based on recommendations. Present Mike announced while Momo looked mighty proud of herself. Yeah, Momo, you got your own present Mike intro, Mina said. Quick question. What are the qualifications to get in through recommendations? Toru asked. Well, you had to be given a referral by someone in the hero business, whether it be an actual pro or someone well-known. Then there was the written exam, though I couldn't say if it was the same as the non-recommended applicants. Then for the practical exam was a three-kilometer race through an obstacle course, and after that was an interview with a selected pro. Momo explained. Shoto, Sitsuna, and Juzo nodded in confirmation to what the Ravenet said. Another good reason why I'm glad I decided to take the regular exam. Izuku said, I don't think I would have passed the obstacle course. You were offered to get in through recommendations, Midori. 
Mina asked. Yet, but I wanted to get in on my own merit, without any outside help. So why didn't you take the recommendation exam, Ida? Ochako asked. I'm sure your family would have given you a referral. Like Midoriya, I wish to get into UA by my own merit as well. Tenya admitted. Now then, time to blow this joint. All Might said, standing behind the lots. Let's move on to the next match. Think about everything we saw and discussed as you tackle this training for yourself. You okay there, Bakubro? Ajiro asked in worry. You looked completely out of it. I was a complete idiot. Katsuki grumbled. Is Kaken actually getting character development? Denki asked. I expected a whole character arc and shit. Language, Kaminari, Tenya said. The scene transitioned to a whole new building labeled Battle Building B. Match 2. Team B will be our heroes. All Might announced as the camera showed Miso and Shoto standing outside the building. Then the camera showed Mashirao and Toru inside the building. And team, I will be the villains. Hey, Ajiro. Toru called out to her partner as she started taking off her gloves. Let's get serious. I'm going to take off all my clothes and totally disappear. Yeah, cool. Pretty sure the floating earpiece is mighty obvious. Giselle commented. Hagakir is using her quirk to our advantage. But it's kind of weird to know there's a naked girl standing by me. What exactly am I supposed to do here, Mashirao thought in confusion. Toru let out a huff of annoyance while Mashirao looked sheepish. Most of the students snickered at that while others were flustered at the situation. Your world's existence is a century or so since our time, yet no support company thought of putting cloaking devices on costumes. A Leister said. A shame that we're not a part of this world. We could make quite the impact in our respective businesses, me in fashion and you in support items. Giselle said. Uh, just don't look, okay? Toru asked in a flustered state. What's the difference? Mishiro asked. Oh, Ajiro, the women thought, shaking their heads. Izuku chuckled. And here I thought I was bad when it comes to girls. You're not bad, so to speak. You know what you want, but you don't know how to say it. Ochako said, making most of the girls giggle. Hey, Izuku said in mock offense, is for horses. It's not your fault that those bitches back then never gave you the time of day to get to know you better because the only thing they cared about was your quirklessness. Ochako said, making the audience gasp, including Izuku. She cursed. First Midori, now Ochako. Our green bean and machai girl are corrupted. Mina wailed theatrically, shaking Ijiro. What is the world coming to? This isn't going away anytime soon. Giselle said as she paused the show. A Leicester growled quietly, but decided not to get involved until it was necessary. Ashido, you do know I can swear, right? Izuku asked, looking at the pink-skinned girl. What? Mina asked as she stopped shaking Ijiro. She was not the only one curious about this newfound discovery. This is new. A Leicester said while his wife replaced her glass of scotch with a fake teacup with her pinky raised, and he narrowed his eyes at her. Put your hand down, Giselle. Nope. Giselle said, popping the pee once again. It's the end times, Ibarra said with her hands clasped. Just because you don't hear me doesn't mean I don't do it. Izuku said with a shrug, I'm always nice and polite, but I'm still a teenager. And I have my own reasons. Ochako admitted, tapping her index fingers together. Izuku, where did you learn to say these words? Inko asked sternly. Well, Izuku's words wandered off. The majority of the students immediately turned to Katsuki. A Leicester and Giselle stifled their laughs. Without hesitation, Giselle said. You heathen, how dare you tarnish Midoriya's pure soul with your endless barrage of profanity, Ibarra exclaimed. What? Katsuki exclaimed. You listen here, you Adam and Eve knockoff. Don't blame me because Deku knows how to curse. Please do not disrespect the first children. Giselle said. Deku, tell these extras that I'm not the reason that you have a shitty mouth. Katsuki said. 
Back Hugo, language, Tenya exclaimed. Izuku rolled his eyes, knowing that the blonde would use him as a get-out-of-jail card. I wouldn't blame Kekin entirely. I blame everyone around me during my time at Aldera. Ha! I told you extras that I had nothing to do with the damn nerd having a shitty mouth. Katsuki said with a smirk. Bakugu, mind your language, Tenya reprimanded once more. Shut it four eyes I wasn't talking to you. But it was mostly Kaken and are just as terrible former classmates. Izuku said. Deku, Katsuki growled. Kaken. Izuku turned to look at his rival. Deku. Kaken. Denki. The two turned to glare at the golden-haired idiot, who interrupted their little, whatever that was. Uh, sorry, just re-enacting the meme. Denki said awkwardly, before leaning back into his seat. Carry on. Enough. A Leicester growled, pinching the bridge of his nose. Next to him, Giselle was too busy laughing. He was trying not to look at her due to her. Back to the problem, children. We are not carrying on with this nonsense. Come now, darling. Giselle said once she got a hold of herself. I know you're not a prude, and you have to say that the moment was funny. A Leicester chuckled. Fine you got me, but still, press play. Look alive, kids. Show us you're the embodiment of good. Or evil. Let's go. All Might announced, holding a clipboard in his hand. The buzzer sounded, starting the timer and match. Mizo retracted the webs of his skin and formed an ear on one of his tentacles. The screen zoomed in on him his form taking on the rough hue of the introductory sketches as his name and Quirk appeared on the screen. Mizo Shoji, Quirk, duply arms, he can replicate different body parts on the tips of his tentacles. Now that's super strange. Present Mike announced as Shoto walked into the building. Really, Hizashi? Aizawa asked, deadpanning at his best friend. What's strange, sir? Mizo asked in an offended tone. What? I didn't say that, Present Mike exclaimed, trying to defend himself. Do not blame Present Mike for anything that is said before or after the sports festival. After all, nobody knows how his voice announces like that, not even us. A Leicester said, One's on the north side of the fourth floor, and I think the other's on the same level somewhere. Both are barefoot. Mizo's top tentacle turned into another mouth. I bet the Invisible One plans to sneak up and surprise us. For your own safety, go outside, Shoto said as he walked forward. I'm sure our opponents intend to fight a defensive battle. His right hand started to form frost. He then put his hand to the wall, ice immediately spreading as it also started to spread from under his foot. But we've already won. Everyone except for class a looked in shock as ice raced through the building covering every single exposed surface both inside and outside. Izuku looked both in awe and shock since he was unconscious for three hours. He won that one in an instant. Nito uttered. Just like in the sports festival, Itsuka said. Oh, 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 my feet are stuck, Toru exclaimed. This quirk is insane. Holy crap, how are the three strongest guys in our class so terrifying? Nina asked. I'm terrifying, Izuku thought. Pry yourself up if you want, but it might be hard to fight me with no skin on the bottom of your feet. Shoto said as he walked past his opponent. In the monitoring room, All Might and the other students were shown shivering from the cold except Fumikage and Tenya. He incapacitated them without compromising the weapon or his teammate. Take close note of his technique, students. Overkill. A Leicester interjected. This was purely overkill. Had it been different, those two would be treated for frostbite. I agree with Mr. Sinclair. This could have ended badly, especially since Hagakure was barefoot. Midnight said. We will get that fixed when we get back to UA and we are no longer doing business with that support company. Nezu stated. The hero team wins, All Might announced. Shoto then used his left side to melt the ice across the building. Heat, too? Cho asked, seeing that the ice was melting. 
The screen transitioned to the building steaming from Shoto, using his quirk then to Toru who whimpered in pain. Sorry. Shoto apologized sincerely to the invisible girl. Water under the bridge, Toru replied back. It's not your fault, we're just playing on different levels, Shoto said. The screen zoomed in on him, his form taking on the rough hue of the introductory sketches as his name and quirk appeared on the screen. Shoto Todoroki, another of the four admitted to the hero course based on recommendations. Quirk, half cold, half hot. He freezes with his right side and burns up the charts with his left. The range of his abilities is unknown, present Mike announced in a mysterious tone. Holy crap, Sato exclaimed. That guy is kind of intimidating. Denki admitted. He got in on a recommendation, so he must be good. Tsuyu said while Ochako and Mina looked scared and Kayoka just looked, dead inside. That's only because of my old man. Moving on, All Might announced. Time to gather round for a review of the second match. After that, we'll jet on over to the next battle. Meanwhile, Katsuki bit his lower lip in frustration. I'm sensing a bit of an inferiority complex from Bakugo. Midnight pointed out. He was beginning to see that he was not the only strongest in his class. Aizawa said. Bits and pieces of the following trials were shown, usually the hero teams just entering and the villain teams getting ready to defend. One shot showed Minoru eyeing Momo's backside while she did all of the work. Tsuyu's tongue snapped out and slapped Minoru. The Sinclair's side. Ouch. What the heck? I already got the look from her for that, Minoru complained. I for one approve of Tsuyu defending her classmate's honor, Tenya stated. Yeah, the other one a girl said all at once. At this point, it's more of abuse than defending honor. A Leicester said with a disappointed look. I swear, if you act like this now, I wonder what you glass children will do in the future. Minoru looked over at the teachers. Perhaps if you hadn't been so busy ogling, you could have done more to help your partner, Aizawa said dryly. But she made the steel and everything for the door on her own. What was I supposed to do? Minoru whined. What about adding your quirk to the barricade? Aizawa challenged. Something to make the beams stick together would have made it even stronger. Well dot 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 it seemed strong enough without it. And it was. They didn't break through. Minoru argued. What about using your quirk to secure the window? Izuku asked. Tsu can stick to walls. She could have come up that way. I would have if it hadn't taken so long for us to find the weapon and realize why we couldn't get the door open. Tsuyu confirmed. See? You can't blame me for the two of them not making a better plan to find the fake weapon once their first plan failed. Minoru countered. Momo huffed while Shoto patted her shoulder sympathetically. Oh no! A lecher! What a nightmare! Giselle said in a sarcastic tone before turning serious. Are you going to come up with that excuse with ogling men when you go pro? Your costume lacks practicality, so think how you can fix that while still having some decency. While shocked by Giselle's words, Momo took the words to heart. Yes, ma'am. Good, Giselle said. And Sue, you attack Minoru one more time with your tongue. I won't hesitate to make the length of it into a normal person's tongue, understood? Yes, ma'am, Tsuyu said. Good. Giselle repeated. A Leicester huffed in amusement. She pressed play on the remote for a third time. Yuga entered the building in a regal fashion. Mina slid down the hall using her acid. She then spread out her arms wide, covered in acid, happily exclaiming, Surf's up. The acid fell on Yuga's cape and made two holes in it, upsetting him. Mina put her hands together in an apologetic gesture and said, Oops, my bad. Jisui's Taujer's Enkoler Contour Sequi Tu as Fade Ma Cape, Mon Amy, Yuga said. Mina was confused and asked, What did you say, Ayama? I'm still mad at what you did to my cape, my friend. Giselle translated. Most of the students and adults were shocked at how Giselle translated that so quickly. 
Mina apologized for her mistake again, which Yuga accepted after some time. Hey, why aren't we seeing the complete matches between the rest of the teams? Tetsu Tetsu asked. The rest of the matches weren't that exciting compared to the first two matches. Ajiro admitted. A whistle was heard, signaling the end of the class. All Might and the 19 students were standing in front of the exit tunnel of Ground Beta. That's a wrap. Super work. You really stepped up to the plate, and we didn't have any major injuries, except for Midoriya. You should be proud. It's nice to hear some encouraging words after our homeroom class. The screen showed the manic look of Aizawa from the quirk assessment test. It then transitioned back to the students, showing the front row of students nodding in agreement. Mr. Aizawa was kind of a buzzkill. Aizawa had the same manic look. Is that right? Well, maybe when we... He was cut off by midnight smacking him on the shoulder. Stop that, the dominatrix scolded the erasure hero. All Might put his hands out in a welcoming gesture as stood in front of a golden-colored Yua emblem. I'm happy to bring such staggering positivity to my alma mater. That's all for now, folks. I should go and check on young Midoriya's progress. Now, watch how a pro exits, like he's got somewhere to be. The number one ran off in a burst of speed. Okay, you guys, that is a hero, Denki exclaimed in excitement. Ah, I'll never be able to run that fast. Mashiro complained. Don't worry so much, Mashiro, Toru consoled her boyfriend. You're not all might. You don't have to try to be as strong or as fast as him. The blonde-tailed boy smiled at his girlfriend. Thanks, Toru. So when were you two going to tell everyone that you're a couple? Izuku asked. Because we were going to do it for you, Ochako said. Toru faltered in her seat, unable to come up with an argument. I messed up there. All might look back to see Katsuki with his hair covering his eyes. Young Bakugo really is overflowing with pride. His ego may be justified but a school like Yue is bound to shatter it. All Might thought as he was running from the class. As his teacher, it's my sworn duty to counsel him well. But it'll have to wait. The hero started to steam. He pressed a button, and the doorway closed behind him as he started to breathe heavily. I can't hold this form any longer. In a poof of smoke, All Might was in his skeletal form. I barely have enough time to teach a class. Shit. To think he was that short on time, Momo uttered. I mean, we'd thought about it yesterday, but... I understand your concerns, but now that All Might is retired and, Nezu added. The second day of school, and he's already a regular patient. Why didn't you stop him, All Might? All Might coughed. You're right, recovery girl. I'm sorry. It's no good apologizing to me. Recovery girl fumed. He's too exhausted from his classes for my quirk. I can't treat all of his injuries at once. I did some first aid, but after the Roman Four is finished, we'll have to wait for his body to heal overnight. Izuku, Inko quietly said in worry. Come on, All Might. I know you passed your powers onto this boy, but you can't spoil him. I am trying not to play favorites. I wanted to consider his feelings, though. You've done a good job at that. Aizawa snarked. He needed to see that he was capable of winning the exercise. All Might admitted. Oh yeah. Also, will you please not talk so loudly about one for all when anyone around you could hear? Yeah, yeah. I know, Recovery Girl said with sass. Mr. Natural Born Hero. Mr. Symbol of Peace. Several people know about my injury and this weak form. Like the UF faculty and a certain group of pro heroes, for example. Who's the group of pro heroes? The students thought. However, only a select few people know the set ref of one for all. That's you, the principal, and a very close friend of mine. Young Midoriya, too, of course, but no one else knows the truth about my powers. All Might explained as the faces of the first and last person were shown, while the faces of the two in between were not shown. I wonder why Naitai and Gran Torino were not on that list, Izuku, Nezu, and the Sinclairs thought. And now all of us. You're the number one hero in the world, all might. Does it really matter if you were born with your quirk or not? 
Do you have to be the symbol of peace? Is it that important? If they knew I wasn't, the temptation of this power could corrupt our society. All Might said with a fierce expression, This quirk, those who wield it are responsible for mankind's safety. Recovery Girl sighed. Well, if that's the case, it's even more important for you to be a good guide. You're right. All Might is right, Momo said. This information is dangerous. Even if they don't know, as Midoriya said, that the power has to be willingly transferred, the knowledge that a super-strength quirk can be passed on from person to person would definitely be a temptation to villains. Even then, they could try to force Midoriya to give them his power in a hostage situation, Tenya added. Tetsu Tetsu grimaced. Cowardly, but I can see villains using that tactic. Actually, Izuku thought, one villain already knows. All for one. He created one for all, even if it was by accident. He would know that it can be passed along. But it was Shigaraki who wanted me dead. Izuku looked tired and in pain as he opened his eyes, taking in the Roman four, and that he was in bed in Recovery Girl's office. He looked at the wall clock in front of him. 3.55. It's late afternoon, he wondered aloud. Recovery Girl leaned over him, filling his vision. Rise and shine, Sonny. Izuku's classmates chuckled as his on-screen self blinked and gasped in surprise. The show cut to an image of the exterior of Yua, bathed in the warm glow of evening light. That's all for today's treatment, Recovery Girl's voiceover told Izuku as he walked through the halls alone, his broken and bandaged right arm in a sling. Come back tomorrow, okay? I'm sorry you had to wake up alone, Izuku, Ochako apologized. But the teachers wouldn't let us skip class to wait for you. It's okay, Izuku replied with a smile as his on-screen self worried about Aizawa choking him with his scarf. I know you would have come by if you could. Aizawa grimaced. His actions caused his student to believe that he would be reprimanded and attacked at any given time. Izuku slowly opened the door to 1A's classroom. Ajiro turned around at the sound and grinned at the sight. Hey, it's Midoriya. Good to see you back. Super. Izuku gasped as he suddenly found himself surrounded by the redhead, Mina, Hanta, and Rikido. All of them smiled encouragingly at the green-haired boy. Ajiro leaned forward, still not done, while Mina excitedly bounced around next to him. Ha! Man, I don't know what you were saying during that match, but you were all fired up, huh? And now that we know what was being said, it really did get you guys fired up, Ajiro said. Damn straight. That fight was personal, Katsuki growled. Personal for you. Izuku just wanted to be able to stand up to you, Ochako said. You did a great job dodging, Mina complimented Izuku with a grin. You guys really turned up in the first match, Rikido said. So none of us held back in our rounds, either. Katsuki scoffed. As if... You were far from elegant, but I suppose. Mina cut off Yuga's attempt to speak as she hopped up and down again. And the dodging was like, whoa. Izuku gasped again, looking around at them all with a bewildered smile. Mina smiled softly. I guess now we know why you had that smile then, Midori. Yeah, Hanta agreed. I know Gyro said it before, but... Your middle school sucked, Kayoka finished. Ochako smiled and looked at Mina. Also, Mina, your dodging was like, whoa, really? I didn't have anything else to go off of, Mina countered. And his dodging was super awesome. I don't know how many of us could have held their own against Bakugo like that at the start of the term. Hey, I'm Ijiro Kirishima. The redhead jabbed his thumb at himself. He then pointed at Hanta. We've been going over training results while you were in recovery. Hi, I'm Hanta Siro. Hanta introduced himself. I'm Mina Ashido. The pinkette introduced herself, cutting Yuga off once more. And I just gotta say, your dodging was awesome. Looks like someone has a fan, Giselle teased and Eleister chuckled. Ochako looked back at Mina with a jealous aura. Izuku pulled Ochako's cheek to get her attention. Stop that. Are you going to act like that with Koda? No, Ochako said, looking embarrassed now. Good. 
Izuku let go of her cheek. Then he kissed it. Takoyami, Tenya declared as he strode towards the bird-headed boy with his arms making stiff motions. Stop using that desk as a chair. Tenya reprimanded the other student as Kayoka and Mashurao stood by him. Get off of it this instant. Kayoka placed her right hand on her hip, slightly turning towards the taller boy. Dude, you need to chill. Tenya jerked backwards while Mashurao pointed to his shoulder. You're carrying a lot of tension. Tenya hunched inwards. No one understands, he muttered. I cannot condone actions that disrespect these desks, Ida declared, chopping his hand down at the trio. Not when great men and women, our upperclassmen, once used them. Also noisy, Fumikage grumbled. Ida, Aizawa pinched the bridge of his nose. We get new desks every year. Tenya froze in shock. The students tried to stifle their laughter but failed. Pretty soon, the theater was filled with uproarious laughter. I can't believe we actually got new desks, Mina exclaimed. Oh God, I can't breathe. Ochako managed to squeeze out through her giggles, hunched over on the love seat. While trying to contain his own laughter, Izuku looked over to Tenya, who was chuckling to himself, while a cackling may held on to him. It took the laughter in the theater several more seconds to quiet down. That was mostly due to whenever some semblance of calm overcame the laughter, someone would let out a snort and the laughing would begin anew. After the laughing cooled down, Tenya had one thing to say before Giselle unpaused the show. I believe I deserve that one, Tenya said. Aiden never relaxes, does he, Izuku thought with an awkward smile as the other students around the door watched the bespectacled boy. That boy needs to loosen up, doesn't he? Midnight wondered, placing her cheek in her right palm. I told Tensei to fix that. I guess old habits die hard, Aizawa said. The door on the other side of the classroom opened, Denki coming through, carrying a stack of books. So, anyway, want to grab a bite sometime, he was saying to the person behind him, which appeared to be Ochako, helping him in carrying more books. Kind of stuff you like? Ochako looked up in thought, eyes straying. Anything sweet? Her eyes caught sight of Izuku at the other door, and she dashed towards him. Hey, Deku, Denki sighed and looked dejected as his shoulders slumped. Swing and a miss. Hanta snickered. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, Kaminari, Ochako said, blushing in shame. That must have been so rude. Don't worry about it. Water under the bridge. Denki said, brushing away her concern. He shot Hanta a glare once she looked away, though. So if it wasn't for this show, would you two dense cinnamon rolls even know that you liked each other? Setsuna asked with a teasing grin. If Horikoshi could do it, then it would be on the 7th of Never Through to the 15th of Ink and a Hap in Giselle, and a Leicester thought. Well, it has to do with how much stamina I'm using, Izuku explained as he looked around the classroom. Stamina? Ochako asked in confusion. Izuku gasped when he saw that Katsuki's desk was empty. Um, Yuraraka, where's Kaken? The scene transitioned to Izuku running. We tried to stop him from leaving, but he wouldn't listen. You just missed him. Ochako's voiceover said as Izuku raced down the stairs. Damn it. You were tricking me for years by acting weak. Bet you've been laughing behind my back, huh? So where's that flashy power of yours now? Ochako realized why the on-screen version of her boyfriend was running to stop the explosion user. Izuku, don't tell that you revealed one for all to back Hugo. I didn't exactly reveal one for all to him. I just wanted to let him know that I wasn't tricking him. Izuku said and looked down. We'd known each other for years, and he knew I didn't have a quirk. I knew it was confusing him more than anyone, so I felt like... I owed him at least some kind of explanation. No, you didn't owe him an explanation, Mitsuki said. Izuku turned to Mitsuki with a surprised look. But Auntie, it would have been wrong for me to. Mitsuki interrupted the boy. Izuku, if I've known, I know, I should have seen it. Katsuki has always been brash, but after his quirk manifested, he became more aggressive, not just with us, but with the other kids in the community. When you stopped coming to our house, 
I should have realized something was wrong, but I thought it was normal due to my own anger issues. I'm so sorry, Izuku. I failed you as your aunt. Mitsuki says with tears in her eyes. She bowed her head, shocking the Midoriyas. Please forgive me. That goes for me as well. I should have stepped up as Katsuki's father and tried to reel in his ego. As your uncle, I failed you as well, Izuku, and for that, I am so sorry. Masaru says while bowing his head as well. Izuku's jaw dropped in shock to see his aunt and uncle bowing their heads to him for Katsuki's behavior. No, wait, please raise your heads. I never blamed you two for Kaken's behavior. Besides mom, you two were the only ones who truly cared for me. You never saw me as anything less than human. You two never failed me, and I'm grateful to have you two as my auntie and uncle. I've still got a lot to learn. I know that. That's why I'm here. Izuku said as Katsuki was trembling in anger with a tick mark. The former put a hand to his cast. You'll see. I'll work until I have full control of this borrowed quirk, and I'll finally beat you with my own power. Katsuki looked at Izuku in disbelief. Oh crap, what am I saying? I only meant to tell him that I wasn't tricking him, Izuku thought in panic. How dumb do you think I am? Katsuki asked. Izuku gasped in surprise. Katsuki turned around to face Izuku. Borrowed power? Don't talk to me like I'm an idiot, he said, clearly not treating anything Izuku had just said as dignifying belief. You already made a fool out of me in that damn training exercise. So, did you come here to rub it in? I lost. And to make matters worse, it was to you. Never thought I'd hear you admit defeat, Bakubro, Ijo said quietly. That's real manly of you. Shut up, Kirishima, Katsuki replied, voice just above a whisper. The show flashed back to Shoto freezing the entire building. When I was watching that ice guy, the show returned to Katsuki, his arms out and shoulders bent forward in an emotive display. I realized I couldn't beat him in a head-to-head -head fight. Another flashback, this time to Momo with her hand raised. Launching a large-scale attack indoors was a foolish move. Katuki placed a hand over his face. Crap, he shouted. I even agreed with what that girl said. My attack was so stupid. Everyone was watching. Not a snarky comment to be found in their throats as the on-screen Katsuki flexed his arms in the midst of another breakdown in front of the formerly quirkless kid he'd bullied and had now lost to. Even if he'd been left standing at the end and Izuku had gone down, the latter had still accomplished his objective while he had failed. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. He clenched his fist, body shaking in indignant frustration at his own failings. Enjoy that win, Deku. The camera switched angles and cut up to his face, revealing a rare show of emotions on Katsuki's face as tears sat in the corners of his eyes, showing that even he was capable of being brought to tears. You won't get another, I'm just getting started, got that. I'm gonna end up the number one hero, no matter what. Whoa, Itsuka muttered. It's angry, but oddly inspiring, Minoru mumbled. Several people who were able to hear his quiet voice nodded along. Present Mike sighed. Well, he does have a goal and tenacity. I'll give him that much. Katsuki wiped his eyes with his sleeve as he walked away. You'll never beat me again, you bastard. Don't even try. Hey, who'd win right now? Tetsutetsu asked. Me, Katsuki loudly answered. Don't you remember hearing about our fight after the exam? I'm the guy who ended up on top. Nope, not even close. Giselle interjected. Call it favoritism, but even if he was holding back his percentage, he can beat you in a fight, especially once he gets full control of one for all. There you are, All Might announced his presence in a burst of wind as he whooshed past his successor in dramatic still images before placing his hands on the blonde, explosive child's shoulders. Bakugo! I've found you. The majority of the audience laughed at the former hero's theatrics. Just so you know, pride is an important attribute to have, but while you certainly have the abilities to become a pro hero, there's still plenty you have to learn. Let go of me, all might, Katsuki ordered. Right now, 
he turned his head to look at the pro at the man's inquiring grunt and growled. Save your speeches. I'll be more famous than you, and I'll do it without your help. Tetsu Tetsu whistled. Now that takes guts. Telling All Might to shove off, and you'll be better than him without his help. Wow, Dinky chuckled. If only you were this calm with the huck. You got something to say, Sparky? Katsuki asked. The electrification user shrugged. You heard me. Man, All Might thought with a sweaty brow and a bit of a confused smile as the camera panned up and away from him towards the glass walls of Yua. Being a teacher is hard. Welcome to our world, Present Mike said. Mina, Ochako, and Suyu were pressed against the glass, looking down at the scene that had happened in front of the school. Huh, Mina said. I wonder what that was all about. Ochako clenched her fists together and furrowed her brow. The faded battle between rivals. Whatever Midoriya was saying, it looked like Bakugo really wanted to punch him, Suyu replied, turning to look at the other two girls. Childhood friends turned enemies. Ochako added sagely to herself as she pressed her forehead against the glass. Easy on the antics, Ochako, Izuku said. I didn't know anything else at the time, Ochako pouted, looking flustered. All I knew was that you two had been childhood friends at one point, and that he picked on you. So now you wanted to beat him to show you could stand up to him. It was totally a faded battle between rivals moment. Yuraka, by any chance are you Kirishima's secret sister? Shoto asked. The students looked at him, unable to comprehend what that was supposed to mean. Am I what? Ochako shrieked out. How does that even work? Ijiro asked. We don't even have the same quirk. You and Tetsutetsu have the same type of quirk, Shoto explained. You both act the same. That doesn't mean we're the same, Ijiro and Tetsutetsu said in unison. The audience started to laugh. Midoriya, what were you saying to Bakugo before I arrived so heroically? All Might slightly toward his successor with his hand to his ear. Hmm, I'm so curious. The camera panned over the Yua main building. Why don't you tell me all the juicy details? The ending began to play. Instead of All Might's music starting to play, the audience was introduced to a different scene. That's weird. All Might's music is not playing, Mashuro said. It was night. In another city, signs, street lights, and lit windows illuminating the streets as the camera panned down. Narrator Izuku began to speak over the calm night background. None of us were prepared for what was to come. All Might warned us about cunning villains. All Might's eyes widened and he gasped quietly as the show revealed a building, the exterior of which was familiar to him. That bar. Katsuki was starting to recognize the bar as well. And a few days later, we learned firsthand how terrifying they could actually be. Some of the students gulped, already understanding what narrator Izuku was getting at. Don't tell me, Toru muttered. Momo gasped. So we're not just seeing our own perspectives, we're being show. Did you see this joke? A raspy voice asked after tossing a newspaper onto the bar counter. Izuku paled, Achako growing cold in the blanket next to him, as his words got caught in his throat. That voice, Minoru whispered. A cold drink was placed down on the paper over a picture of All Might in his civilian suit. The condensation soaked in, warping the newsprint. It says he's a teacher now. It's him, Izuku gasped. Hey. The person called attention to another man standing behind the counter wearing a dress shirt, vest, and tie, with a metal neck brace and a body made of flowing black vapor with a purple outline. Big glowing yellow eyes looked over at the speaker, a man dressed in black with numerous severed hands grasping at his shoulders and neck. Ribbit, Tsuyu croaked. What do you think will happen? The man started to say, the camera now switching to show him from a different angle, revealing a muscled mass of black, with an exposed pink brain, beady eyes, and a beak-like face with rows of exposed teeth. Everyone felt chills at the sight of the grotesque creature. Aizawa tensed, trying not to flinch as his body remembered the strength of the beast. Present Mike and Midnight put comforting hands on both of the underground hero's shoulders. 
All might put a hand to his injury, the phantom sensation of fingers digging into his skin. When the mighty symbol of peace, the camera showed part of the villain's face. Beneath his unkempt mop of faded steel-blue hair was a white dismembered hand covering his face, showing only the dry, cracked skin around a single exposed red eye. The majority of class aflinched at the sight of the villain. Izuku put his hand towards his throat, the phantom sensation of a hand with dry, rough skin scratching against his neck, four fingers clenching and choking him one finger away from turning him into dust. Ochako gripped his arm tightly. Breathe, Izuku. Calm down. Don't panic. He's not here, Izuku said to himself. Is finally killed by the villains? Shigaraki, Izuku gasped out. The next episode preview started, but nobody couldn't concentrate on it at all. Izuku started to double over, his breathing intensifying, and she could feel the bare skin of his arm beneath the short sleeves of his summer uniform grow cold. Izuku? Izuku, Ochako gasped. Movement flurried around her as Tenya quickly approached them while she got on her knees in front of him, better to look up at his face. Izuku's green eyes had shrunk to pinpricks and sweat was beating on his forehead. A hand touched his shoulder, but he didn't pay any attention to it. Izuku, look at me, Ochako said. Oh, Ochako, Izuku uttered out. His green eyes didn't waver from hers. You're here, all right? You're here. You're safe with us. We won't let him get you. Ochako promised. Your Araka's right, Tenya agreed. Hey, what's going on? Tetsutetsu asked. Why is Madabro freaking out? It probably has to do with seeing Shigaraki up close like that, Ajiro said. I guess your Araka and Madabro could tell you it better. But the last time either of them saw Shigaraki up close like that, he had his hand around Madabro's neck and was choking him at the mall. The majority of Class B, Hitoshi, Mei and the parents looked at the redhead in horror. All it would have taken was one more finger touch, and Madabro wouldn't be here right now, or his neck would have taken a ton of damage, at least. Don't say that, IG, Mina said. You're gonna scare Midori even more. The timer started. Even though most of them felt like they were glued to their seats, the students knew they had to do something before the 15 minutes were up. Ochako went to the back of the theater to get Izuku a glass of water.